to Pistols and Pies starts right now. Here's Jeff Cameron. The Seminole Headlines, 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chant TV begins, as the man just said, right here, right now, in studio, ready to roll. A lot going on. How about us, guys? Right off the bat, there's Ira, there's Corey. They're both here, of course. Uh, news breaks right before we come on the air. This Ooh. does not happen to Seminole Headlines. A rare good. twist. It feels good. We yeah. actually don't know how to handle this. Yeah, <laughs> We're going to go home. Yeah, we're yeah. going to leave. We, we don't know what talk to about do. breaking news. This we like to nuts. talk about news that broke a week ago. We'll tell you about the breaking news in just a moment. First, we have to say, yay, sausage. Take it away, Ira. We get to say we don't have to say we get to say yay, sausage. Right? That is true. Like, it's a, it's a sure. privilege. I purchased some uh, new register sausage last night. Mm. Went old school with the basic. I, you know, I looked at the ch- cheddar jalapeno. Mm. I looked at the andouille because our public's here in Tallahassee, my public's well stocked. And uh, although I've had a couple friends, like an occasion when people go to a Publix and it's not well stocked, they're sending me photos of it as if I can do something. Like I'm the SWAT team, I'm mm. supposed to make a delivery. I or don't the know. Meat or manager. Well, you or know, maybe you know people. I they can make people. put in a yeah. call. Yeah. But uh, yeah, my my Publix was well stocked, so I got some uh, the the re- basic the the old school registers uh, uh norm not hot just the regular pork sausage premium pork sausage that you guys can get. If you really live, I mean, it's almost everywhere in the are country they, now. Are they in South Carolina? Oh, yeah. Up in the South Carolina Myrtle Beach, I think, that not, area. Not the Clemson, Greenville area, do we oh, think? We could, we could be toasting the like, folks. Yeah, we, yeah I was going to say, they get their own. They need a, They should have a sausage party. <laughs> they should. Maybe, maybe they will. <laughs> there will be a sausage party in Clemson <laughs> now that they file their lawsuit. If you want your registered sausage, you can have it delivered. comes in a cooler with ice. It's it's completely fresh. Uh, registers meet register meets.com is the website. And uh, I don't know, maybe Ben will come up with a promo code, code for a Clemson file on the lawsuit. Well, they finally joined the party. And so yeah. the cat's out of the bag there. Let's get to that. That is the news of the day, which is that Clemson has now filed a uh, complaint against the ACC. What was uh, the rush you think? <laughs> Golly, guys. Is Pat Forty busily typing out the column in which he blames now Clemson for all the wrongs in college football? Well, or is he writing the apology uh, piece about I how I promise well, you it ain't so, the second one? Yeah, you don't think so? So you've now had Florida State is suing together the ACC. Clemson is now suing together the ACC. North Carolina's administration put out statements about a month ago that were very similar to everything Florida State said a year ago. Correct. They're clearly interested in trying to get out of the conference. So, yeah, it's probably not all Florida State's fault. It's not all Florida State being greedy. You know the uh, the South Park, and it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> That's where Jim Phillips is at today, buddy. We're we're done here, right? There is an air of uh, uh, inevitability that is uh, set here in the ACC. So what it does get interesting what happens. By the way, one thing I do like about the Clemson complaint is they note in there and declare before the court – they did not agree with the ACC suing Florida State. They said yeah. that was wrong. They didn't even get a chance to vote on it. They didn't it, get a I chance to vote. That's what they said that's, in the complaint. That's and exactly that, what they and said. And that whole thing has been fascinating because so the ACC filed a lawsuit against Florida State before Florida State did, yeah. preempted them. Then Florida State pointed out, hey, you guys, it's in your bylaws that you have to get all the schools to agree to sue a member school or do any kind of legal action. That's right. So then they came back and filed another lawsuit and said, oh, okay, we we, we asked everybody this time. But it turns out maybe they didn't ask everybody <laughs> that time. Clip said, no. Clip said, well, we didn't get to vote on it, and we weren't for it. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, we already knew that this is where this was headed. Maybe it speeds things along. I don't know. I do wonder what the ACC's next move is. I mean, your two biggest brands today are now aligned, and we we think the third is North Carolina, and they're aligned as well. I think we should do a March Madness bracket. Picking like which, which next? schools are next to, to, to join? Who who are going to replace? Yeah, on the Florida level State of Clemson. Stanford and Cal yes. and SMU. Yeah, who are they go? Who's the ACC go after next? I I threw out there maybe Yale and Princeton. What about Rice? Some people said maybe Dartmouth. Rice is a Rice good one. Is Rice is, a good is one. in the Houston area, good right? One. Rice is so a good one. That's Travel a partner one. with SMU. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Rice is not bad. Maybe MIT. Do they play football? You think or they'll go after my old uh, ETSU? <laughs> Lure them from the Southern mm, Conference. I don't, Come I don't on, know if guys. they have the academic standards. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we're yeah, worried that's about. That's what we're right doing. Now. We're doing. Uh, really? I think yeah. ETS, ETSU stacks up against Louisville. Hey, I think, man. Uh, hey, don't talk, don't talk think, down about Louisville. You, think, you so? think Louisville's trying to hang out in this conference? <laughs> you know, are they the next well, to sue? I don't think they have enough gravitas. We'll so, it's but right. it's, uh, look, I, I, I wasn't joking about it. For the last two months, I was getting genuinely angry at Clemson for just. I know you were. Just sheer silence nothing with no whispers or anything just not saying a word about it um but this is florida state is one thing and it's a big one it's a big one thing 
Now you have the number two marquee program, maybe yeah. in some people's eyes, the marquee program because of the success they've had on the field the last half decade or decade. Now they're in it too. That That is the death knell of the, of the conference, clearly. And we knew it was going this way anyway, but it's also reassuring to know they've done it. They pulled the trigger, finally. And they are on your team. You two are in lockstep. You would appear, it would appear that they're on Florida State's team or Florida State's on their team. And the ACC can't survive this. Now they have two of the two biggest schools in the conference. Well, they can survive it in whatever way, they're gonna be, whatever not as, form they're, they're going to be. Not in the current iteration right, right. that it is. They're gone. They're done. They're not a football conference anymore. And there's going to be other schools that probably follow Clemson's. It's going to be like also, uh, Tiger Woods women. There was one, and the next thing you knew, there were nine. <laughs> it, and Suddenly, 30. the Shoney's waitress was not that yeah, special. Anymore. No, it was Perkins. Perkins, Perkins. 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 Um, Are you sure there wasn't a Shoney's? <laughs> probably. He was going by law all, of averages, probably there was. He was going through all the fast food breakfast joints. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but it also becomes a, a question of how much can the how many people are going to be fighting with the ACC in terms of what is their strength in terms of combating these lawsuits? Because, you know, I think the three of us and most people listening to this have thought for a long time that the end is probably going to be a negotiation. Like this isn't going to be a judge making this decision. Right. There it's may be, be some decisions, but it's going to be settled at some point. And now you've got an, another, I mean, gorilla. I mean, there's the two 800 pound gorillas in the conference now are suing to get out. At what point, do those other schools just say, okay, you know what, we, we'll, let's just come up with a dollar and get and get this over with. If you do big picture stuff, though, what I always wonder about things like this is, okay, Clemson moves forward. We're talking about North Carolina and perhaps others doing the same. What is ESPN and what is Fox doing right now? Yeah. Because he, th now we're wrestling over major assets. I mean, that's what this is, right? A race to grab the remaining assets of big-time college football. That's all this is. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. if, if you're ESPN and it's a lost cause – because the ACC network was an asset for you. And okay. the ACC network is finally going to get what they wanted to be. <laughs> yeah. Look, yeah. Lacrosse all the time. Yeah. Yes. Field hockey and lacrosse 24-7. Imagine the joy in their hearts today. Yeah. That's right, Clemson. <laughs> take it on down the road, your bitch-ass lacrosse team. Let's go. <laughs> we get to bring in Harvard. Yes. <laughs> That's right. John Hopkins. Yeah, let's John's go. Let's John do Hopkins this is a good one. Field hockey all yeah. day long, baby. Uh, but, yeah, so, like, I wonder – is the scramble really the wrestling behind closed doors is is espn going to acquiesce now and realize well it's over uh, th this is done everybody has joined the cause i'd rather have if i'm them uh north carolina clemson florida state say miami whomever else you want to name in the sec for us uh than the big 10 continuing planting flags in our backyard here and becoming a coast to coast conference with roots in the south to boot I mean, they—that's where the the fight is. This I like is the to say war. They're planning the register sausage. Ooh, I like it. I yeah. think I that's like what it. Fair doing. enough. Could you yeah. as ESPN like Don Foulpole? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> could, could you as ESPN though, um, if you really don't want to go, you, you could keep these teams in the ACC. I mean, it, it would take a lot of money, but you could do it. Right. You could raise their revenue per year on par with the SEC, since they're all like, if you want to keep Florida State and Clemson as your property for sure. Without going through the hub, the the Guaranteed anguish of a lawsuit the, and everything, the equal of the Big Ten yes. and the SEC. I mean, you could do it. it it's not out. Of, ESPN could say no. The ACC is going to get the same amount of money that the SEC. Well, is. now the never SEC do that, would not but, like that. Well, they'll never do that. But they, what they might could do is say, "We'll give those schools yes. more money that's more equitable the for what they brought." Schools that yeah, we'll give them what we give Vanderbilt right. to stay in the ACC, right. and then I mean, then you have a real. You didn't I we don't want that. Obviously, yeah. we we all every Florida State fan and everybody that covers Florida State wants out. But if ESPN's really serious about it, you know, there's a chance that these lawsuits, there could be an unexp an outcome we're not even thinking about that would keep everybody kind of happy and where they are. If you want to go conspiratorial, you could say this is already decided. You you could you could definitely you could definitely make a case that Clemson finally pulling the trigger may have gotten some assurance. I, I, that we I have a suspicion, don't you, out. Ira, that we know that this is, I mean, you continue to hear it in circles of, you know, in college football circles that this has already kind of been decided. I mean, the, the, the you're not going to take a chance at this point if you are in a war with Fox and ESPN of losing major assets. You're going to have to pull the plug on something, and I think the ACC is what they're pulling the plug on. Well, I mean, I, I, yeah, and you you have to wonder if you again if you're just kind of trying to figure out how the pieces could play. If Florida State felt like they had a good, if we're going with the premise, Florida State felt like they were going to have an offer from the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
And we didn't know yet whether or not the SEC was going to counter to try to protect this this turf. Clemson is not likely a target for the Big Ten. I mean, I just they they would not correct. seem to be a major target for the Big Ten. We we'll see. But it makes you wonder if maybe now ESPN and the SEC have said, you know what, we can't lose these schools. We can't let the Big Ten come down here and maybe we'll be more defensive. We'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. It's all really new. Um, I think, but, but you, I think when that, you say Clemson, are you just talking about because the academic standing, or I mean, because they're a that's huge a, that's football. A, that's a big. Part they're a it. huge football. Program, yeah, that's a, the academics is part of it. But you think about, and I've made this point for eight months now. A, a conference that ha- adds Florida State and Clemson to a conference that already has USC, right. Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, uh, Wisconsin, Oregon, like you're on par with the SEC. Like the Big Ten would be on par, yeah. or maybe a little above it, if you add Florida State and Clemson. Yeah, I just have never heard at any point. I just have not really heard. And maybe it's out there. I, mean, I just if not talking to different people. I've not heard a lot of people say, yeah, Clemson would have a home in the Big Ten. But right. do we think they're locked and loaded together? No, State and Clemson. not anymore, I don't think. Oh, I, 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 they I, used to be. I don't know if they oh, are anymore. All right. Yeah, I, I think they're both come hell or high water, get out of here, go make money. This is like we have to be part of the group that eats from the money trough. We're not going to sit here and get lapped. I mean, they're all in, just like us. But where they land, as long as it's in one of the big two, this is where this has all been heading all along. And for all the folks that wrote all of the uh, besmirching articles of Florida State uh, being what's wrong with college football while ignoring uh, what the SEC did by snatching Oklahoma and Texas away from the Big 12 and neutering that conference, or what the Big 10 did by grabbing Oregon and USC and UCLA and well, I mean, come decimated on. a conference, it blew all up a the, conference. Yeah, and then for somehow, some way, that arrived at Florida State's doorstep as the one that is the great evil. They can all go to hell because we knew this is where this was headed all along, and now you get further evidence of this happening. And look, nobody has to to like what's happening to college athletics. I, for one, don't. I was for a a radical change in the way that the players were able to be compensated, but none of us wanted what we're seeing now. But once it became inevitable and the courts weren't going to step in and nobody was a acting czar on what was best for college football, for example, then you had to play the grand game of musical chairs and do what you have to do to survive. That's what these universities are doing. That's what it's always been about. Like, Oh really? This is where this is headed. You assured me it wasn't going to be this way. Greg Sankey's double middle fingering everybody and just snatching up all assets and everybody's going, okay, well, this is the way it is going to be. And we can sit here on the corner and say, this is bad for college football. And this is wrong. Won't, won't we sing Kumbaya and join hands? Nobody was joining hands. Everybody was going to do whatever they had to do to survive. So this is just another step towards what we already knew to be inevitable. I wonder how quickly now we get past the errors. Stop with this, oh, this is bad for the sport. What are we going to do? Let's start talking brass tacks. Where does Florida State end up? How soon do we know it? Where does Clemson end up? Where does North Carolina end up? What other assets are going to be snatched by the the, the big two, Fox yeah. and ESPN? Who else is going? Does Miami have a home? Don't know. Does uh, They would be a better fit seemingly for the Big Ten, Ira, mm-hmm. given the academic stature that you're talking about, than Clemson certainly would. I've never heard Clemson associated with the Big Ten. In fact, it almost feels like the Big Ten is looking at Clemson as... But we don't... I mean, I, I just think Florida State having Clemson side by side with it makes it more attractive to eat whatever conference it ends up I don't in. think they have to sell themselves though, Corey. I think they're both attractive. Yeah, but I mean, they're, you're more attractive as a duo. Like, you're bringing a, a nat- naturally made rivalry in two really good programs already with you because what I what I don't want to happen is that Clem, Clemson gets to go to the SEC and Florida State's stuck going to West Lafayette and Minneapolis. Like, Florida State is a better asset to the SEC than Clemson. I mean, Florida State's in a state that already has a really so good is, big so football Clemson, program. South Carolina. Clemson's not in a state that has a good football program. Yeah, but it's one this championship. Is that, you're, you're going back to the old argument. This is about amassing the most amount of assets that, that sell well, larger TV think, contracts. Well, Clemson and Florida State do it. But and I'm they, saying Florida State does it. Clemson does it. North Carolina does it. I mean, you, but you would we, you would agree that Florida I don't think State they have to be unified. I don't think they have Florida to be State unified. To get the invite that we think they're going to get. This is still ESPN deciding that they want more, or Fox saying we want more. It, it, if if Fox comes in and says I want Florida State and Clemson, and I'm willing to yeah triple the you know whatever. Listen, the the the, the competitiveness of all of this is that you again are snatching up assets. The battle is Fox and ESPN, not SEC Big Ten per se. So I, I'm really yeah, curious. And I, and I think all of the you know the the premises that we've kind of always operated uh, under, you kind of have to reevaluate. Like you know some some folks in the chat are rightfully saying the Florida State have and Clemson have always been 
business partners and, and you're yeah. alleging, alluding mm -hmm. to that also. And that was the case, but I think is things have gotten shaken up to the point where it becomes like, man, everybody's out for themselves. So it could it help Florida State if 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 the Big Ten was more interested in Florida State because Clemson was coming along or the SEC was more interested, then you would consider that. But I think Florida State feels confidently they've got a home no matter what. I don't know 100% that Clemson had felt that, but it seems like now they do. I feel like that that was part of the reason why they were a little bit slow to jump. I don't, they're not as attractive as Florida State. I know they've had the success the last 10 years. But they're not over as attractive overall. When you talk about marketing, TV ratings, all of that, yeah, well, the numbers don't bear that out. As Florida yeah. State is, yeah, but they're a that, big, they're a big dog. They're, in they are, football. they're worthy, but they're yeah. just not. So I'm saying Florida State, I don't think is dependent on needing Clemson to help them, or they would have waited. Florida State wouldn't have gone out on their own. Yeah, it's objectively true that Florida State's metrics are, are better than Clemson's when it comes to ratings and, and what they are as an asset. You're also right, Corey, that the last ten years Clemson's been the far more uh, successful program on the field, but. Florida State is a 40-year uh, etched in the fabric of college football dominance, right, compared yeah. to Clemson, which has really been a kind of fly-by-night program. I can't wait to hear what Dabo has to say. I can't wait. I mean, there's so much. The, the spring Wuhan meetings. Wuhan will Amelia threaten Island. to walk away, won't he? I mean, it's no, uh, no. He he, it, that's what he does whenever he gets mad. I'll yeah. just walk away. I don't think he'll be mm -hmm. mad. I think he's uh, he's going to support his administration this but time. The mm -hmm. spring meetings are going to be awesome over at Amelia Island. I mean, this is going to be all, a lot of fun. Hey, let's ask the question. Do the three of us – do we find our way to Charlotte? Oh, for uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That ACC yeah. kickoff is going to be crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, for this sure. will be the best ACC kickoff we've ever attended because we're going to say goodbye to a dying conference. I mean, that's kind of you know when you say it like that, it sounds a little sad. Something oh, it's not sad. It's like I, I will do, I will walk through the door with an ear to ear smile, <laughs> but we mistake. are going to say goodbye to to mm. a, to a friend who turned enemy. Yeah, uh, who a lot of good times. You I, had some good times. It's I will like say a, this: what has been interesting, and, and this is from talking to people—not even FSU people, but people around athletics around the country in college sports—that you know you get to know. They've all kind of had a little bit of John decide to Florida State because of the lawsuit, because of how aggressive Florida State was in public. Yeah, publicly, you know, mm -hmm. they just—it's just not what colleges normally do. This stuff's normally done behind scenes. A lot it's of not, things have changed. No, I agree. I'm not criticizing with Florida State. So I'm just you're saying. Not, I don't know. I'm just but saying there's been a perception them. of Florida State as being a rogue program. Right. Pat Forty's column, and, no, and, yeah. and a lot of that was shaped by that, probably. But that's kind of been a perception. But now, man, Florida State's got great cover from the sense of, man, it ain't us. You know, the, the, so I think it does help from a perception standpoint. These next, right. this next six months, this next year, like when you go to these meetings, it's not Florida State that's leaving. It's your, it's your two big dogs. It's yeah. over. I yeah. mean, this, it's over. It angers me though. You're 100. percent This does help Florida State from a perception standpoint, but the disingenuine and dis, dis intellectually dishonest pieces, like the 40 pieces, and you know, when you think about somebody who's bought and paid for, obviously, like Paul Feinbaum talking about behind the scenes in college athletics, Florida state is loathed because people don't behave this way. It's understood when you belong to a conference. Meanwhile, this is a guy that's repping the sec right. who's snatching teams left and right. right. And Greg, he's like, Greg saying he's just pillaging anything that he wants. Right. And he's like, Oh, people, don't, people have no respect for Florida state. Meanwhile, you, you just, you know, it's disingenuous and it makes you mad. So this lends an air of credibility, I suppose, for Florida state that most people who were being honest with themselves, knew wasn't necessary, but you're right. For perception standpoints, I'm sure there are people who aren't in the game, who don't cover this day to day, who don't have, and they're like, Oh, what's well, wrong with Florida state? Yeah. Why are they doing yeah, this? They, well, you get a lot of that. And yeah. now, now you're well, going to see thank you, Clemson. And it took too long. It took way too long. <laughs> well, but you did it. You finally did it. You once said on these airwaves that you, if, if they did it now, it's too late. I was, I was wrong. <laughs> I was take wrong. I take it back. Uh, I feel good. I'm very happy with my orange brothers today, <laughs> brothers and sisters. So uh, thank you for joining the party. Can we get an hour number two for it? No, no it's not. No, not until not we're out of the conference. Two. Conference number two. I'll do that when they get out. When they get out of the <laughs> conference. And so there's zero. So let's conclude. Let's conclude the first segment here with put a ribbon on it. Zero percent chance Florida State's in the ACC in 2025. No, I less I, than I don't, five. Oh, I really? I don't know if I can say. Y'all think they'll be out? Oh, they're gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a very it's good over. chance. Yeah, I, I, I'd say it's about twenty-two percent. Twenty, twenty. That's Five so close. That's close. They're gonna have to have a whole new football schedule. And, yeah, and they're they gonna make it in, yeah, they're in gonna do, eight yeah. months. Well, sure. I mean, they get made after the season anyway. Yeah, the, but they'll have to be in a new conference. And uh, okay, all right. This is how quickly musical chairs is being played I mean, these days. The litigation, it's against rent, litigation takes a while, man. It's they can, a, they can it, be dragged good. out. ACC ain't gonna be in any hurry to get them out of the conference. Well, at what point? Does the ACC decide? Okay, not in the next two months. 
Well, that's what I'm saying. I also wonder at what point those other schools. Right. What, when North it, Carolina it, does it, when Corey, it's clear, yeah, what are when, we doing? When it's clear, North Carolina has basically said, we have to evaluate whether or not this is the conference we can be in. You're North Carolina in the ACC saying that? Yeah. Clemson's filed suit. Florida State's filed suit. You wonder if there's at some point where these presidents say, you know what? Let's let them figure out what the number is. Let them get the hell out of here. We'll be the conference we always wanted to be. The Big East, what the Big East yeah. now is now with UConn, like just a basketball conference and a good one. They could be back, get back to being good at basketball. They can spend all their NIL, they got, NIL money on basketball. Yeah, they got to, what, all five teams they're in not gonna this get, year. They're not going to get shamed about all their lac lacrosse coverage and their field hockey. Yeah, that'll be, it'll be network. celebrated. So, yeah. so you're assuming that after every meaningful program in this conference leaves, that the ACC network is still invested in and they have an evening show and an it'll, afternoon show. It'll be on show. public access in North Carolina. <laughs> Seminole Headlines, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chat TV continues in a moment. conditioning system doesn't check with you before it takes a break that's why we're always ready to help any day anytime anywhere and with our annual service agreement there are no overtime charges ever at bear no heating and air we will always be there for you there no heating and air conditioning if you've been waiting and waiting for the perfect time to buy your new house you'll be waiting forever. This is Shannon Young with Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, and I have been a mortgage lender for over 20 years. And I can tell you that there is no such thing as perfect timing. So take the first step towards your new home and let me show you what that really looks like. Chances are very high that you'll be very surprised at what I can help you do. When rates go low, prices go high, and that home that you've been eyeballing could be gone. If you're wondering how the drop in interest rates is going to affect your payment, give me a call. I'll be more than happy to show you all of the options available to get you into your new home. And for every single loan that we close for a fellow Noel, I will personally donate $250 per closing to the battle's end. Let's do this together and let's keep climbing. Call me today at 954-369-6171. That's 954-369-6171. Or you can find me online at loansfornoles.com. That's loansfornoles.com. Equal housing lender. NMLS number 373031. Tallahassee is full of rich history and traditions. When you think of things that jump out in the minds of longtime residents, the state capitol, McClay Gardens, the springtime Tallahassee parade, FSU and FAMU sports, the St. Mark's Lighthouse, St. George Island, and Paul's Termite and Pest Control. Paul's has been protecting thousands of people, their pets, their homes, and their lawns in the capital region for over 50 years. Locally founded and still locally owned and operated, there aren't many businesses in our industry that keep it together that long. Paul's Pest Control has many customers we've been honored to serve for over the last 50 years. We've experienced tremendous changes in how we treat homes and protect the people that live there. We've moved from liquid termite treatments that require drilling into the home's foundation to Centricon, a baiting system which works with their natural biology. We've moved from interior service to exterior treatments for general pests. But one thing we're not going to change is our old-fashioned commitment to personal service for each of our customers. The same way we've been doing it for over 50 years. For the elimination of termites, any other pests, and a greener lawn too. Call Paul's. We'll get them all. Here's another remarkable success story from QC Kinetics. This one from Chad, who hurt his knee at the gym one day, and it just kept on hurting for months. From my high school football and wrestling days, I already had a little bit of damage in there, but this just sent it over the edge. Chad tried traditional treatments with no improvement. When he turned to the non-surgical regenerative treatments at QC Kinetics. It was really fascinating how they did their work, and the science behind it was very intriguing, and it works. Extracting the cure out of my own body blew my mind. It's like I'm brand new again. It was fantastic. That's because the QC Kinetics natural biologic treatments use your body's own healing power to restore damaged tissue in your hips, shoulders, back, and knees, providing long-lasting relief. Now I'm back at the gym. I'm 100% feeling great. If you're tired of suffering with pain from arthritis or injury, call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. Call QC Kinetics, 850-391-4280. That's 850-391-4280. 850-391-4280. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Registered Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! 
Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chofel, and Corey Clark. Yeah, a, a big day for uh, those that uh, call the Garnet and Gold their uh, alma mater and or a university they support and love, whether it's uh, coming to games financially, whatever it might be. You're excited because I think today's a day in which you, you have a combo reason to celebrate. You get uh, another step closer to leaving this dump of a conference and a day in which we'll all be at practice to cover the yeah. start of spring football. Which I thought is you exciting. were going with the uh, 25% off at Garnet Gold. I, thought that's uh, where I, you were I tweeted that out earlier today, already sufficiently uh, celebrated yesterday and today, but you're right to mention it because if you're a member of uh, Warchant.com, uh, then you get 25% off uh, Garnet and Gold today if you go in and baseball purchases. purchase baseball. the baseball stuff, man. Mm. Who wouldn't want to purchase, especially if you're a, a bandwagon You could be a front runner. Day, yeah. That's like front runner's yeah, money. They will. They will do it. And by the way, I really do like the, the jersey. I like the gold one the best. Are you a front runner if you got back on the bandwagon for this baseball team this year? Like you couldn't have been. People can't be mad at you for not sitting through those games. You didn't have those to go, but years. you could always be supportive. Well, nobody. And, yeah, it's yeah, not like they swore. Yeah, them I don't off. think if you were off the last couple of years, took the last two years off, that makes you a bandwagon fan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there was no wagon to even jump on. There was no. <laughs> the there was no was, space. There was on bad any. baseball wagon. Yeah, there was. And yeah, you don't want to be on that one. But that was the only bandwagon to be be on. <laughs> bad baseball wagon. Oh, yeah, come on board the bad baseball wagon, so, everybody. What I, balls I, bouncing off of it like arrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tipping over. Yeah. Getting tagged out in a rundown. <laughs> um. So but what I like about what happened now with Clemson, or really what happened the last two weeks. So they announced the college football playoff structure, which is going to be. It just. It's incredibly. <laughs> Un, it's just unbelievable. It isn't unbelievable, but for those that don't know, the SEC and Big Ten get 29% of the money each, so that's 58%. The ACC gets 17% of the money. The Big 12 gets 14% of the money. Then everybody else splits up the last 0.5%. You want to bet that changes when uh, Florida State and Clemson are not in the ACC? Right, but that there's, <laughs> not, there's not getting the 17 yeah, anymore. No. But like it, it, it's it was never so obvious. Yeah, that we know we we think so much highly of ourselves. And you're lucky that you even get anything at all. Mm-hmm. We're going to do what we want. We get 29 percent each. You get 17 percent each. No. Even though you're all theoretically striving for the same goal and are in the same boat to try to make yeah, a run in the at same it. league. Yeah, it would be like if the AFC had won seven straight Super Bowls, and, and all of a sudden the NFC just gets the NFC. yeah, they just get like half the money. And the, you know the other thing, the thing that doesn't make any sense, it just speaks to the power of the TV brands and why they want to prop up their schools. But that was a Big Ten done in college football. I mean, they won Mi- Michigan won. Great. Yep, yep. They but won the invitational. For ninety percent of our lifetimes, those schools get boat raced anytime they got into a prominent game. The yeah, Big Ten I- never stood up against. So why would they get it? I mean, what other than the fact yeah, that Fox won, wants their schools to be? They've won up. two national championships in twenty-seven years. I mean, the ACC won they, more than they've won. They, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, triple yeah. more than they won. Yeah. So yeah, you would think, but yeah, no, it's the Big Ten. They're they're the big dogs. Well, so, because yeah, and and nobody Fox even bats, wants to keep, but nobody even bats yeah. an eye at it. And what what I did like, and I last will say, it's currently constructed. I get your point historically, but it's currently constructed. It makes sense. It doesn't really make sense. Well, I understand nothing about what's happening in college right. football makes well, sense. I mean, but yeah, they're bringing in Southern Cal and UCLA. They're bringing huge. Oregon, Washington. Oregon, Washington. Yeah, it, it, I get it, but it's also like you still haven't done anything. Right. No, no. I, I it, Why wouldn't based it just on be who gets, who gets into the playoff? Now, again, we know that that's the selection committee will make that six SEC. Yeah, so they can <laughs> rig it however they want. Yeah, but, yeah. but that's – it's just – yeah, like th- there's – Listen, boys, the, the bastardization of the sport's already happened, right? You might as well go – Go get while they're getting. So Which gets back to the point. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, so but anyway, going back to the, the point I was trying to make was like two weeks ago, it's, it, it it seemed like at least on Twitter, our ex as we call it now, um, the the national folks finally started to see. They're like, this seems wrong. What Greg Sankey was all about. <laughs> First, it started with the payout structure, and Dan Wetzel's like, this seems unfair. Yeah, you this, think this Thanks, strikes man. at the heart of unfairness, and it's like, yeah, man. That's why Florida State wants to get out of the ACC. We've been jumping up and down telling you that for years now. Also, there was, I'll say it over and over again, an era of inevitability to all of this. This all seemed patently obvious. Well, it seemed, but then again, so, and then Ralph Russo, who I like, who's an AP writer from New York, said this, he said something similar, that this is probably the final death nail of equality in college football. And I'm like, I think that happened when the SEC, just because it could, took Texas and Oklahoma and wrecked the conference. Didn't need them. 
were already the big dog on the street, just took them anyway. And then a week later, it comes out that Sankey wants to add more power five teams to the NCAA basketball tournament and leave out the conference champions. And Dan Wolken from USA Today says, Greg Sankey might be, is trying to ruin college athletics if people let him. And it's like, yeah, we but know. You do wonder, maybe it's just because we're in an affected area or the program we cover was being greatly uh, affected. How does somebody who is invested, immersed, and educated as to the hows and whys and ways of this sport in college athletics in general just now coming to the party? Well, Texas think, and Oklahoma was it. How, but now, how does, it. How, I, we, I think part of it is there's a, you know, for example, the snub, right? So when that happened, it was obvious, clearly obvious. ESPN and the SEC decided. You talking about a uh, Gladstone at the Oscars I, I, from yeah. Orange yeah. Yeah. Killer ES, of the Flower? ESPN Moon. and SEC decided we're not getting left out. They're, SEC is not going to be left out of the playoff. Yeah. So we're going to screw Florida State. It, we're going to screw somebody. Somebody's going to get gonna screwed. Be, it happened. It happened to be State Florida State. Yeah, yeah. They. It was as obvious as day, but people refused to believe that's what really happened. They really bought the argument because that nobody oh, wants well, to believe their that, quarterback. Though. So my point is, I think. There have been the signs have been there, but nobody's – it hasn't been as obvious, I guess, and that's a Corey's point. Now they're not even trying to hide it. Like, well, they don't have just, to anymore. They've already right. successfully done what they needed to do. This right. is the problem with going along with it and, and being willfully ignorant. As evidence mounts all around you, this is the stuff. <laughs> well, they should have been, and I wrote it at the time, and I equated it to the – I'm going to go back a little while, Ira, to the, the first Jurassic Park when Jeff Goldblum is mm. seeing the video yeah. about how they got all the DNA out of the mosquito or that whatever came, it was. That came out in... 93, maybe? Yeah. Uh, this is normally an Ira yeah. reference. Yeah, I know. Well, he's no, he's usually 81. I would get shamed. He's flash I would get shame for breaking out a three-decade-old reference. The chaos theory in the back yeah. of the Jeep. It, but he's sure. saying that, uh, he's like, your scientists were so busy and preoccupied wondering if they could clone a dinosaur. They wonder. They never thought to ask Whether if they should, should do right. it. In Sankey, all the, and all the national writers were so... I don't know, man. They were so intoxicated by the fact that he went and grabbed Texas and Oklahoma in this unbelievable silent power, secret power play. Nobody I, that I remember was like, this is horrible for college football. Like, just because you well, can go a, get were, tense at Texas yeah, and Oklahoma. There were a few, but they did not well, they jump were in up Texas and down and in a Oklahoma. way that suggested that this is going to be the beginning of the end, as they should have. But really, you can go back even further than that. The ACC rating the Big East. You can keep, there, there are right. a bunch of moments that told you we were headed here. But Sankey's a villain. I'm convinced of it now. Well, he is but a who, villain. He doesn't care. He's I paid know he handsomely doesn't. by the SEC. He won. But he runs college football, but he only cares about one conference, but which he, is inherently But that's the one who flawed. pays his ass. Yeah, I know. But again, great. You're going to have yeah, a sport that so, nobody cares but, but about. But, but, Listen, yeah, I hated but, George Steinbrenner but, too. But, Corey, but Corey's point is, there. it's short-sighted. It is short-sighted. Yeah, make but the SEC great, and you're going to have nobody else to play, we, and you're going to become NASCAR with the regional sport. when we talk about the – payouts in baseball i used to scream george steinbrenner the yankees can't play the yankees yeah this is it's a trust you have to have other people to play but obviously in this case nobody stood up to the sec nobody stood up to greg sankey and the people covering it and i i don't want to be sanctimonious here but it angers me when walking and others just now come to the party yeah that they should all go to hell for that nonsense yeah. they had to know what was happening it was obvious yeah, and I feel like the Big Ten was probably going to go down this road, but they had to once the SEC did. Of course they did. It became a pissing contest. You have to, you can't lose. And they have the money and the power to do it. They have enough of, I mean, think about those institutions and does, the money. Does Tallahassee have any direct flights to any Big Ten schools? Look, Corey, I don't think they're going to the Big Ten. But if I'm they did, I'm asking, again. I think do they're they going have to the a, SEC. Can you think of a Big Ten school to Tallahassee? Is there one in Chicago, maybe? Is there a Tallahassee Chicago? to Chicago? Uh, I don't not. think so. I've, probably not. Probably not direct. No. Probably Look, a train. That may change. We can get a train. Maybe some high-speed mm -hmm. rail. College football will start high-speed rail in this country. I, I think I think Florida State uh, is going to end up in the SEC. I mm -hmm. don't think. I hope so, and I, that would be awesome. Well, but as much gonna, as I hate Greg Sankey and what he's done to the sport. I was going to say, you're about to join the, but, the but, very But, hey, you got to join him or fall or drown. Right. Um, uh, but I, I would, uh, like our man Kenny Payne, you don't want to be on the Titanic. You don't want to jump <laughs> back on the Titanic. On Come on, boys, join us. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I, don't, uh, I, don't I would that. love if they were in the SEC. That would be unbelievable. It would also be good for the local economy. Yes. It would be good for the local economy. Otherwise, I don't know. I mean, if it matters. Well, you I, like flying. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I don't I, I just, just I just don't think it matters what I prefer. I mean, I'm talking from a big picture standpoint. I just Oh, I, it'd be much better for the wanna, fan base too, because they, they're shorter it trips. It would be. The stadium would be much more full. It Doak, also would or, be uh, Doak would be. Yeah, man. It also would be a 
challenge, man. It would be a challenge. It would be a huge yeah, challenge. Buddy, no, no, you, no. Can go, you can lose five games yeah, I was gonna say, in the playoff matter anymore. these days. If we're going to keep expanding the playoff. And, and that's going to change yeah. how people feel about their team when they go yeah. eight and five. Well, well, yeah. It does if you win the Super Bowl, even as a wild card. People don't go like, hey, I know we didn't win the division. They're fine with the winning thing, the Super Bowl. And, the, and what I'm talking about here is, I mean, look, the SEC and the Big Ten are going to have so much more money than everybody else, which is, is right. going to – aid their competitive ability to hire coaches, build facilities, yeah, coaches. And pay NIL, pay salaries, and all that. So those t- two conferences are going to have that. The SEC also is in this region athletically and in terms of the talent that's down here. Oh, yeah, it's a war. I wouldn't mind being up there. Oh, I wouldn't mind being recruiting in Florida and playing in the Big Ten from a competitive advantage. The if counter, I'm a coach, that's yeah. where I'd rather yeah, be. The be counter easier. to that, though, is that what does it do to baseball? What does it do to soccer? What I think those sports to, may end up having to be in different conferences. Well, I think they're going to end up having to be club. Non-football. <laughs> or or regional. They'll be regional, uh, regionalized. Well, sports. there's there's still a lot to play out here. But at the end of the day, I do I do think, though, that Florida State – I'm with you, Ira. I don't care if they go to the Big Ten or the SEC. I, I'm fine with either. I know that they just have to get out of here, which is what we've been beating the drum for for a long time. I think from a travel standpoint, it makes much more sense, obviously, for all of us to go to SEC cities. Uh, I hate having to join and run into the arms of the enemy because I agree with you, Sankey's yeah. the devil. But, you know, he made it abundantly clear what he was going to do, and everybody just sat idly by and watched it happen. And the NCAA was neutered by the court, so they couldn't do anything. And at some point, we were all just – And at know. the end of the day, man, I, I feel for some schools. There's a lot of schools I don't feel for. You know, when the, when the schools that get left behind. The, the Wake BCs Forest. <laughs> and, well, Wake Forest has at least tried, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. But the schools that have, have, have taken the money – and could have they've sucked on the teeth and could have competed mm. those schools can go screw themselves yeah they and they didn't they just yeah. sucked on the teeth for years and did never even never contributed anything and just got the money to be uh butt ass average in college football didn't care didn't try still don't care i think i think you just like saying sucked on the teeth i dude i was thinking the same exact thing mm-hmm. i haven't I gotten to say it, say it in a while out of respect i didn't I say it I but i appreciate that you did i noticed it immediately i was like oh, he's gonna double down, double down he's gonna, i knew the double down was coming I there's really the nothing else you do with the teeth no you don't bat it around uh, it depends on what you're I'm into. talking about like it's a cow headlines 93.3 real talk radio war shan tv continues in a moment your local news now. The suspect in a Colquitt County aggravated assault case has been captured. Timothy Dean Melton was taken into custody on Friday at around 9 p.m. The Colquitt County Sheriff's Office put out a bolo for Melton for an aggravated assault incident that took place in the 2900 block of the Mitchell County line. And thanks to cyber tips from social media, Melton was found and arrested. It's election day in Leon County. It's time for Florida's 2024 presidential preference primary election. Florida is a closed primary state, so only residents registered with the party can vote in this election. In Florida, only Republican voters can cast a vote. Incumbent President Joe Biden has already won enough delegates to nab the Democratic nomination for president. Former President Donald Trump is the presumptive Republican nominee for president after he dominated Republican polls during Super Tuesday earlier this month. All other major candidates dropped out of the races. This is Rachel Nay with your World Talk 93.3 Local News Update. Brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. High temperatures reach up to 64 this afternoon. Under clear skies, winds out of the north, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Lows dip down to about 40 tonight. Daytime highs approaching 73 tomorrow. Ample sunshine expected. Upper 70s Thursday turning cooler Friday with highs in the low 70s and storms possible. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Currently, it's 56 degrees. Honey, can you go up in the attic and put a few things for me? Uh, sure, honey. Well, oh, this is going to be fun. Where is that light switch again? Oh, can't stand there. <laughs> I don't even want to know what that was. Oh, why am I up here? There has got to be a better way. <laughs> Honey, are you okay? There is. The Southeast Portable Buildings. Call them today. 850-580-6400. That's 850-580-6400. No need to get up in that attic any longer when you can call Southeast Portable Buildings. They have sizes to help with the smallest space needs to the largest. Call them today. 850-580-6400. That's 850-580-6400. Or visit them online at southeastportablebuildings.com. Still don't know what that thing was in the attic. 
stressful. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can, too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chauffel, and Corey Clark. What I do wonder is, where are we 10 years from now in, in college football? Is is that, I think we're pie in the sky. You know, we used to, uh, nostalgia. I mean, mm. I, the, the sport. The good old days. Look, I know what happens. I remember one time getting into an argument back when I used to take a ton of calls and this guy was arguing about the, basically the, the purity of college football. Do, we, do you know the last call you took? Do you remember it? Mm-mm. When would it have been? He took a call from me yesterday. That doesn't count. They called. Yeah. Count. You were invited. You were an invited guest, an uninvited guest. I bet it's, I don't know. It would have been in my last year in, in clear, at clear channel. So, so, and I was at ESPN for so 11, 10, 2011. 10, 20, yeah, Bengal, Bengal tiger. Maybe <laughs> Bingo, it's Bingo Bingo Tyler, right? Tyler, who are the guy that ate the ghost pepper. He uh, used, to, used to take his calls too. It, ghost pepper. Nate is still around. Who was the man. cop TCA or something uh, that we had several cops. Uh, one Copper one Dan initials. was a guy. You should yeah. have memorialized Dave, your probably. last call. I wonder I how know. bad it was that you're like, I can't do this anymore. No, for years I used to argue against taking calls um, just because that was the way that it was going. There was a reason for yeah, that. It was, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, long story short, I just, um, I, I remember this caller saying that, you know, he was arguing for, the purity of college football. And I was like, buddy, those that, that yeah, ship sailed, sailed ages ago. If you and I remember saying to him at the time, if you want purity of college football, go watch the Ivy League. Nobody's gonna do that. They th- they threaten to walk away, they threaten to do these things, but they're not gonna go watch the Ivy League unless they went to one of those schools. And I do I do think that we've just moved from that point to where we are now to a place where the college football we loved felt felt collegial. And it's gonna feel anything but collegial now if it doesn't already yeah, it already does it's just it's continuing to move in that direction to a place where i warned and we'll see what happens i could have this all wrong um there's already a professional football league and they do it better yeah i mean the the one thing you have going for it though is obviously the the, the tie even if it's a name only to the schools yeah you know, it's much and, more and name so, only now so, though yeah. so it's so there <laughs> there is that part of it it's on your college campus you get a chance to go back home you have the homecoming all that kind of stuff so but but yeah, so the next step of this, if you look at the evolution of where this is all going and part of why there is this accumulation of power and money, because there is a feeling, it's probably going to happen, that, that, that schools are going to have to, schools and conferences are going to have to start paying football players a lot of money. Football, men's basketball players, the, the players in sports that generate the revenue are going to start getting paid, not just through NIL collectives, but getting paid by the schools, getting paid yeah. by the conferences, a lot of money. And to do that, they're going to need to marshal all the resources into the these conferences that can make as much money as they can to pay the athletes because that money's just not sitting around. Like, right? It's not like schools. People talk about schools making money; they do, but then they use it. Well, they like have to. They have to spend it on backwards something. to show well, that they're not making a profit. Well, but they also, but they, <laughs> but they're going to invest it in buildings and facilities and coaches and salaries yes. and support staffs that have a hundred people and all that. So the money's not. It's not like there's a stockpile of money. So now, if you're going to start paying. Uh, large sums of money to the athletes, then that has to come from somewhere. And again, that's where I think, it, you know, you go, if it gets to these two power conferences or whatever it is, do those other sports become club sports? Do those other conferences just focus on, does their college football look different? You know, so if, if Vanderbilt leaves whatever this is and joins whatever the new non professional football right, of yeah, college yeah. football is the semi-pro league. Is, yeah. There's yeah. going to be some football in that, at that level. Oh, it's going to it's gonna be way. different. I do welcome that. I mean, you know what you're watching. It's different, right? right? I mean, it's okay. If I tune in on a given Saturday to Tulane and Marshall, knowing what Tulane and Marshall is, and they're on even playing fields at that point, maybe they're governed by the NCAA or some similar type organization that they've agreed upon. Do to you be think you'd really tune into Tulane? Oh, I, I, well, you watch college and NBA basketball. Yes, I would. I watch all kinds of levels, but I just want to know what I'm watching. I want to clearly define. I haven't watched a Marshall game since Randy Moss was there. Well, right. But my point would be just because you hate Marshall, but (laughs) 
I do. I, you've always hated him. I've never understood. Ever it. since the crash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hated that movie for some reason. <laughs> no, I, I think that people do watch James Madison versus Virginia or whatever it might be and say, okay, I know what this is. But it is what they, that's what they deserve. They don't, I mean, yeah, look, I'm man, not worried about them. I'm yeah. saying, I just, as a consumer, I'll watch both. I'll know exactly what I'm watching in the form of Florida State versus Texas in the SEC. Well, it's, in but the, it's like it, it, as opposed to what I'm watching with, I don't know, just, just name any two mid-level teams. It's like the NFL versus uh, uh, whatever the Rock League is now. The, is he the Arena League or the XFL? I, it's hard to UFL, make, UFL, yeah. UFL. Some, some, sort of some UFL. people will watch that stuff, but it's, no, it's, but that's different. It's a different time of year. It's I, I don't. I, I think college football would run simultaneously. Like when you watch Maction, you know what you're watching. It's the Mac. Yeah. That's what they are. You still watch. Well, I mean, again, that's a Wednesday night. And but so you, I, but I'm, that's my so point. You still watch. But they would have to do that. They, they would have to do that. But they're not going to compete with no, this. And, and this they won't need to. Super yeah, you won't, yeah, but, maybe, but they're opting yeah. out. They're choosing not yeah. to compete. Yeah, well, so. and they, they need to. They need to get out of the way. I mean, they do. It, it just, again, I always come back to But then it. you're saying, that you, but that's what you are saying about the, your concern about the ruining the sport. No, the sport's is been the ruined. Fact that, well, yeah, it's not. They're not going to put the genie back right. in. So at this point, the but that's the, where this is headed. Corey. The Northwesterns, the Vanderbilts, the Rutgers, they need to get out of the way. We were moving. Well, they're not going to give but up it, their piece of the pie. But Rutgers that's what is going nowhere. Is that yeah? If, they got if, grandfathered and they if got lucky. things changed. If things would have stayed the same and Florida State just rolled in the ACC for the next twelve years, um, them and Clemson would have both been making thirty million dollars a year less. Right. Then those schools I just this mentioned. This is the which good is fortune for those who happen to be lucky enough to have made a decision that they could have never predicted that many years out. Yeah, would 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 Curry favor to this degree? South financially? Carolina. Yeah. What I mean, have they ever won? Imagine. Look, look at yeah, Arkansas. Arkansas, Arkansas getting into the SEC out of the Southwest Conference. Yeah. I mean, look, there's Arkansas. A, yeah. yeah, there's the a Mississippi lot of them. schools. At least and, all and missed. It, and it kind of became chance because the SEC wasn't a thing. It wasn't yeah. even a big deal back in the day. I mean, it just was what it was. A stat for our 2,200 uh, viewers on YouTube right now. In the 1990s, Florida State, by itself, had as many top five finishes as the entire SEC yeah. combined. By itself, Florida State had as many, 10, as the entire SEC combined. Well, in the, in the, the narrative that the SEC has just always dominated. No, that's never been the case. Georgia, is a very recent Georgia thing. disappeared for two decades. Well, and that's the reason I don't have sympathy for some of these ACC schools who, who, at, who could compete is because when they started getting the money from the ACE, from Florida State, what yeah. Florida State brought to the ACC, the whole idea was, oh, it's gonna the the rising tide lifts all lifts boats. all boats. That didn't happen because those schools just took whatever money they got and just you know put it in other stuff. They like just, they didn't they invest just, in football. They, they didn't spruce the track around the field. Right. Up. Yeah. Well, they would get they were the, the flowers they would have <laughs> over around the track. Yeah. And hey, Snowy what Hill was one fan base that? I do feel bad about. Uh, you know, I, I don't think any of us would disagree that Clemson. And Florida State are the two best fan bases in the in the conference. Clemson has a great fan base. Yeah, sure. Very Absolutely. passionate. Yeah, yeah. Virginia Tech, they they have cared about football. I would consider them they've a fallen off football a cliff, but school. Sure. Yeah. But I think they've fallen off a cliff not from their own doing. I, I just think they've yeah, they they're, they're bad coaching. They're, they're in a tough spot. They are. But Look that's where what, they are. But, I, I mean, uh, but I think they care. I like that fan base. And the I fan wish base is fine. Yeah, they, yeah. they don't have – there's no hope for a, a school like Virginia I just think Tech. if you're one of these schools that – is deciding universities that are deciding not to play the big boy semi pro brand of football that we're headed towards, you're going to benefit ultimately from finding equal footing yeah. to compete with. Like, listen, this isn't for everybody. This is only going to be what 48, 50 schools. Yeah. I mean, everybody else got to play somewhere. We'll still watch that, especially with gambling. Everybody will still watch, they'll gamble. It'll just be different, and you'll know what it, you're watching. But also, watching. Boston College and Duke, we're never going to play for a national championship. They're never going to get into a college football playoff. Just get rid of the sport. <laughs> Put all your resources into something else, man. You're not going to do it. You've never done it. they're going to get rid of the sport. But, I mean, they they're could. They're just not joining the new Super League. I mean, Boston College has got to get good at something. They think have about to. Think about what, what it would mean for Florida State to get into one of those conferences, though, because over the last five years, ten years maybe, at least the last five years, the biggest hurdle for Florida State and schools in the ACC when it comes to recruiting is the the message that the SEC is a different level mm. has certainly got down to the recruits and their high school coaches. So when when they interview these kids, but they all can't go to the SEC, right, right. and some of them choose an ACC school, Florida State, over an SEC school because maybe whatever it is, there's a Cache specific reason. Years, yeah. But by and large, the best high school football players want to go play in the SEC. They've been told. Or now the Big Ten as well, yeah. More the SEC. Kids down here want to in be the in the SEC. South, in the South, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 
So now if you put Florida State in one of those conferences with the money and the resources, oh, yeah, buddy. it's a game changer. You know, because yeah. you now, especially if you're in the SEC, but, it can't but be it's used against you. Yeah, and exactly. It's, yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. biggest hurdle they have to always overcome. It would be taken. Well, you away. saw what Florida State looked like on equal footing with the rest of the country, or leave it a little higher footing. It was the nineties. Yeah. You know, yeah. There, there was no the SEC had no nobody wanted to go. Nobody right. was following all of themselves to go to the SEC right. in the nineties. They wanted to go to the best schools in the country. It was Florida State and Miami. They did pretty well. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of talent in the South. Florida State has always overcome uh, a lack of history. Uh, obviously, Florida State is a younger school when it comes to a- athletics. When you think about compared to a lot of other mm. schools that they were competing yeah. against, so like the arguments between Florida State and Florida fans was frequently about how Florida State had done as much, if not more, than Florida had in half the time. Yeah, you know, and with half the money, there's many more graduates at the University of Florida ha- who've built up generational wealth and given to the university, right? right? So Florida State, whenever they've had an opportunity to compete on equal footing, has been a dominant program. And now, to Iris' point, th- there won't be an argument. Yeah, that's the last thing that's that they've had to overcome when it comes to recruiting. Yeah. Is that they're in a and they're in a second-rate conference. You get out of the ACC, How that's no you? longer a concern. How yeah. dare you? I All mean, the things that the ACC has done for this school, <laughs> and you're going to call them a second-rate conference? Especially that John Swafford. I didn't, is yeah. third-rate is third a thing? If, yeah. I, if third-rate was a thing, I would have gone with third-rate. Uh, what do you think that I, I love how redacted everything was in the Clemson suit? We'll, we'll know more about this tomorrow. But did they bring up Swafford's kid? No, they didn't yet. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. They didn't yet. It all depends Chad. on how the ACC responds. Yeah, then Chad's coming out again. Oh, Chad's yeah, going to start taking straight. We're going for broke now, bitches. <laughs> yeah, your son and your legacy is un- in play. I also love that some of the comments from some of the national people on Twitter when the lawsuit came out was about how – Clemson didn't take as, as angry a tone as Florida oh, State did. It's Jesus. like, who gives a crap? Why they were is more that? classy. They were classy yeah, in their exactly. lawsuit trying to get out of your third-rate conference. They were. They showed a lot more they class. They weren't as gruff. Yeah. They didn't take as they aggressive weren't as ill-tempered. Yeah. They weren't as ill-tempered. Who said that? Uh, somebody on Twitter. I saw somebody retweet yeah, There was some, you know, a couple. I mean, come on, things. man. I mean, again, that's the other thing that I hate about all this is watching these writers pretend. Like they didn't know this was coming and that Florida state was just acting in their own right. self-interest. Oh, it was some uniquely selfish thing that Florida state. So did. Because again, this goes back to, this is what the beauty of this is. Remember when Florida state started speaking out a year ago, well, oh, it was Pete Thamel, by the way. Okay. It, a year ago when Florida state started speaking out loudly and then going into the spring and, and we would l- watch these other tobacco road yeah. podcasts and videos, oh. but just uh, shocked at the way Florida state this acted. Is, yeah. How are they going to act now? You know, probably not your, the same your energy. Two biggest schools yeah. have decided screw well, you. Well, they're going to blame the two schools. That's what they're going to do. Uh, I, I don't think, think so. It's I think very it's hollow. Gonna, it's going to be more inward looking, yeah. like the ACC's the in trouble. And you've seen it, that coming. You've yes. seen that yeah. coming. Yeah, they've already started to acquiesce right. a little. Hour number two, forthcoming. Stay with. <laughs> probably already know that pinch a penny pools and spas is your one-stop destination for all pool maintenance needs offering everything you need from chemicals cleaners vacuums nets and more but that's not all pinch a penny also carries a huge selection of premium hot springs hot tubs paired with easy financing options making these luxury hot tubs affordable for everyone and if you have an older hot tub and you're worried about the hassle of removing it worry no more Pinch a Penny will not only remove and haul away your old hot tub, but also offer a trade in value for a credit towards your new one. So why wait? Visit Pinch a Penny's 12,000 square foot showroom today on Greer Road and discover how effortless and affordable owning a fantastic hot tub can be. Find out more at TallahasseeHotspring.com. That's TallahasseeHotspring.com. I'm Greg Tish here to share one of my favorite TCC stories. In the summer of 1966, Eugene Lamb wanted to stay in shape before leaving to play college basketball in Louisiana. So he jogged to Tallahassee from his home in Midway and helped lay the bricks for the first building on what's now the TCC campus on Apple Yard Drive. Today, he is a longtime member of the TCC District Board of Trustees. It's no exaggeration when we say Trustee Lamb helped build TCC into what it is today. TCC thanks our community for 58 years of support. We look forward to moving into the future together. 
Have you been injured on Interstate 10? I'm Jimmy Fasig of Fasig Brooks Law Offices. We've partnered with Roadproof to access all interstate traffic cameras along I-10 from Pensacola to Jacksonville. Let us help you get the proof you need to stand up for yourself and get fair compensation for your injuries. Call us today and let us secure the proof you need to come back stronger. Basic Brooks, 850-777-7777, offices Destin, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville. Indulge in the authentic Korean way of grilling right at your table at the all-new Chow One Korean Steakhouse in Tallahassee. All you can eat succulent beef, chicken, pork, and an amazing selection of fresh vegetables and homemade sauces crafted with all natural ingredients in a luxurious upscale dining environment. Chow One Korean Steakhouse. Experience the ultimate fusion of flavor and fun in Tallahassee. Enjoy happy hour from 4 to 7 daily. Located at 1107 Appalachian Parkway, just east of the Capitol Building. Coming up next for the Janet. The latest betting odds and line movements from Vegas. This is your action update. Now here are your latest lines from our guys in the desert. College basketball tonight in the NIT, an old rivalry game as Central Florida is matched up against South Florida in Orlando. UCF sitting as a four and a half point favorite and paying out at minus 215 on the money line. South Florida with a big three pay at plus 176. The over under at 139 and a half. The NCAA tournament getting underway tonight with the first four. Two games are being played each in Dayton, Ohio. Wagner against Howard. Howard, a three and a half point favorites. The over under has been set at 127 and a half. And then the second game has Virginia against the Colorado State. Colorado State favored by two and a half. Over under 120 and a half. For the latest odds all the time, visit vcin.com. I'm Matt Pauley. This has been your action update on Tallahassee's Real Talk Station, Real Talk 93.3. Hi, my name is Alani. A little thing I like about the spicy deluxe sandwich is that you taste the crunch, you taste the pepper jack cheese melting, and you taste the spicy flavors in the sandwich. I'm telling you, 10 out of 10. Hi, my name is Enrique. A little thing I love about Chick-fil-A's spicy deluxe sandwich is you get that rich flavor of the chicken and definitely that nice, tangy, warm bite. It's the perfect harmony of spiciness and taste. Order the spicy deluxe sandwich on the Chick-fil-A app today. Real guests paid for their testimonials. Now, during Staples Print Big Sale, get $20 off your print purchase of $100 or more, $50 off your print purchase of $200 or more, and $100 off your print purchase of $300 or more. So the more you print at Staples, the more you save. To demonstrate, print, print, print at Staples, you save, save, save. But if you print, 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 print at Staples, you save, 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 save. See how that works. Staples Print Big Sale. Print more, save more. Up to $100. Ends 4-6. Visit staples.com slash print for details. The weather is unpredictable and can cause issues around your home. Weston Treywick provides commercial, residential, and industrial electrical wiring services, yearly inspections on fire alarms, portable generator sales, and so much more. With 24-7 emergency service and repair, Weston Treywick will be your calm in the storm. Give them a call at 514-0003. Weston Treywick, professional electrical services day or night. Visit online at westontrewick.com. Man, I just got a text from my wife. She wants me to cook dinner and then snuggle on the couch next to a roaring fire. So what's the problem, Dave? You already got the new grill and you're a great cook. I got one major problem. We don't have a fireplace. Man, that's an easy fix. Just call Hearth and Patio. They got a lot of fireplaces that can help you for your romantic evenings. Wood, gas, electric, and a ton of different sizes, man. Call Hearth and Patio today, 850-727-4282, or visit them online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. Hearth and Patio, ignite. That spark in your life. Lawson and Lawson Electrical Services has been Tallahassee's preferred residential electrician for over 30 years. Hi, this is Rowdy Lawson, and we've earned our reputation because we care about our customers, about quality, and about providing great service. We stand by every job we do and consider it a privilege to work on a family project like a new house, a custom addition, or a green renovation. For all your residential or service projects, call the good guys, Lawson and Lawson Electrical Services, 562 4111. 
What will the Knowles do to follow up an unconquered 2023? WarChant.com, the market leader in FSU football and sports coverage, is the place to find out. Join the largest FSU fan community and talk several sports in WarChant's Travel Council and premium recruiting message board forums. Enjoy special access to multimedia elements like Wake Up WarChant, the Jeff Cameron Show, and Seminole Headlines, plus exclusive forums with FSU student-athletes and a members-only discount to Garnet and Gold. WarChant.com is your ultimate Seminole sports source. Head to WarChant.com and sign up today. Many orthodontists in Tallahassee can straighten a smile, but at Birch Orthodontics, they're dedicated to providing the finest care possible. The experienced and friendly staff is trained in all of the latest techniques. So whether you need standard treatment like braces or Invisalign, or you have a more complicated case requiring extra attention, Birch Orthodontics is here for you. Set up your free consultation today by visiting birchorthodontics.com, B-U-R-C-H orthodontics.com, or call 850-877-1692. At Birch Orthodontics, they create beautiful smiles that last a lifetime. It's time for Seminole Headlines, featuring Warchant.com's Jeff Cameron, Managing Editor Ira Chauffel, and Senior Writer Corey Clark. Your weekly dose of all things FSU, Pistols and Pies, starts right now. Here's Jeff Cameron. Hour number two, Seminole Headlines. Have a lot of questions coming your way. As always, want to say thanks to our great friend and wonderful supporter, Birch Orthodontics, Dr. Birch and her staff, the very best in the business, easing your fears, explaining in great detail uh, what's going to happen and why, and then you see the success. Uh, she has been a great supporter of ours for a very long time, and we continue with that relationship, Birch Orthodontics. And the thing is, guys, it's not, you know, it's not just for kids. Mm. Anybody in your family who needs orthodontic work, you're never too old to have straight teeth is what we've always said that we've always talked about that. Well, that's been our motto since the start of this show, even before yeah. we even knew who she was, we were saying <laughs> that it just worked out. Um, but yeah, they do tremendous work and look, there's a lot of competition in the market. Now, Dr. Birch is, is one of the OGs. She's are definitely a ride or die with the uh, seminal headlines, but she's been in business over 20 years now done tremendous work, but there's a lot of other, uh, orthodontists trying to get in the business, but, and, and they may do fine work. But we don't think anybody's better than Dr. Birch. No, fine ain't good enough. Yeah. No, I was going to say, when you have the best, you don't have to settle yeah. for it's fine. Yeah. And the ACC might... has been fine. Uh, I mean, it's yeah, been for a fine. while. It, it was, was fine, it, but yeah. you, you don't want to, you won't be in there anymore. I think we do have to reiterate, though, to your point, Corey, for those just tuning in. Some people are just like, listen, I only like the questions. Yeah. They're missing out on the great content of hour one. And mm. I just have to let them know all that they missed, which was uh, the big news day. Uh, not only does Florida State begin spring football practice, we were at the media luncheon yesterday. Got to talk to coaches, a lot of great stuff on Warchant.com and Warchant TV. And of course, all of us in our various capacities have been talking about or writing about that very thing. But today we get to go out there and watch them actually practice. The other piece of big news today is, of course, Clemson has joined the party. Mm. And they have joined the fight. They claim that the ACC did not hold a vote requesting that its members, including Clemson, approve of the lawsuit against Florida State, nor has Clemson, I'm quoting, ever authorized the ACC's lawsuit against Florida State. They're like, we're with you, Florida yeah. State. We love you. We're, we're sorry about all this. This is reprehensible. Picking uh, sides. Yeah. So, so here's the deal. Now you have the two biggest, baddest uh, programs in all the land in this particular conference and the only sport that matters, which is uh, football in terms of the money, uh, joined at the hip. Maybe not necessarily where they end up, but at least in the fight against the ACC. And one would think that we're moving inexorably towards the end of I the ACC. I want to be joined at the hip. I've, I've come back. I've you, come full what, circle. Do you work it. for Clemson? What is going on? Clearly this? the last four months, I was not a fan of Clemson. Well, only because they weren't doing what you wanted them to do. Right. But now that they did, but all once they do, it away, he's just, but I, you know, I was there at the punt roost. You, you're I you're was there. I, there's, there's a, uh, and I was there for the first ACC game up there with Charlie and all that. And I, I just feel like we're they're, they're, uh, they should be at the hip. They should be intertwined uh, who cares? in the future. Don't forget about you'll football. forget about Clemson ten minutes after they're they're in a different conference. I agree. Probably. He also I like you know, that stadium. I like that. It's fan not base. like it's we, not like. Go ahead. We just happened. What just happened with Florida State getting screwed out of the the playoff by the SEC and ESPN. The Invitational. And we, you know, look. I'm not saying we would swear the Florida State should never be in the SEC, but I'm not pining away from them. I'm not them. pining anyway, for it. I just, this guy though, yeah, this, look at this. It's all about saving the relationship with Clemson yeah. and getting in the SEC. It's like, like have some self-respect. No, buddy. like-minded football fans. You're the quick travel. I'll get in trouble for this. Great. You for know, the economy. You're, you're, you're the girl that suspects that the man's intentions aren't on the up and up. And then all he has to do is say, I love you. And then you're and back it, in. Yeah. It. You're just back in after having been, you know, I don't care. <laughs> 
I don't care that you label me as you, that. You whore? Yeah, I don't care about that. Absolutely. <laughs> and the SEC would be a lot more fun to be a part of than the Big Ten. Flying to California, hey, flying to Eugene. You know what's going to be fun? Being out of this damn conference, absolutely. not having a chance to compete. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's I'd what's going to be fun. Them to play in a parking lot before they're in this conference. For well, longer. and listen, I look at it as it saves a lot of the other sports to the degree that uh, those sports are going to still be involved in the same conference. But I mean, the money is coming in at that point, which allows you to have the same kinds of facilities that the SEC and the Big Ten have in, say, baseball or basketball or whatever it might be. Somebody in the chat, Tally RC, says, stop with the travel nonsense. How many games? How many away games do people actually go to? This is all about Corey, guys. This is not about – his not, concern is not the fan base. That's true. His concern is about him. I would tell you that when him Florida not State – to go to La, when, West Lafayette. When Florida State plays at Auburn, there would be 10,000 Florida State yeah, fans sure, at Auburn. Sure. There would be 10,000 fans in Baton Rouge. There would be – ten, just like those Miami games. Those ACC games, I mean, you can get tickets, but Florida State fans aren't going to Boston. I mean, the ones that live up there do, and you're not going to Minnesota, and there's you're not going to Purdue. More, there's a hell of a lot more Florida State fans in those games than there are any other school in the conference well, sure. when they go on the but, road. But, I mean, imagine Tennessee yeah, and no, LSU and you. Athens. No, I'm with Come you, on, man. man. It would be a better experience without question. I do want to clarify, though. And, but, and, but screw them also. Yeah, I, I, I'm not pining. Until, until Florida State joins them. Then, and then, then, and then we're fine. Hey, we're, but we're, I will I'm never, not pining away until that point. No piney, we'll have we'll, Sankey on the show every week. Yeah. Hey, Dr. <laughs> Mr. Sankey. So if we adopted the Paul approach, we would have to have Sankey on every week and let him hold court. Tell us all about what what it is we didn't know. And how he saved college sports. Yeah. And we'd have to let him know afterwards that we really greatly appreciate him joining <laughs> Everything he's done for us. <laughs> Today is, uh, by the way, it is uh, Garnet and Gold Take Me Out to War Chant Day. Uh, you get, uh, what do you get, subscribers? 25% off all FSU baseball items at Garnet and Gold. That's is that what you've been looking thing. at your computer this whole time? I'm for? trying to get things lined up for the questions. Uh, we had some issues with the questions, so I'm – making sure that the computer is working properly. It's the pros pro that I am to carry on the conversation, insightful mm, and witty as it might be, you're right, like, and still getting the questions. You're like directing traffic over there. You're like a air traffic control like your brother. He's retired. I'm taking over. Yeah. This is what this is what we're doing. Uh, by what game next season will we know if this football team can win the national title? That's what Garrett wants. To oh. Um, wow. Well, we're not just talking about – we're not just talking about, hey, you're going to repeat as ACC champions, but the it's an national question. title. So if they lost one of those first two games, I think we would all say to ourselves, well, they're not going to win a national title. I don't know. It's 12-team playoff. You but could. what 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 game would you – but if you're losing to Georgia Tech or Boston College, you probably well, – if you lose to Boston College, I'd say, yes, Georgia Tech's not terrible. You're probably not running the gamut of four four playoff games. Hey, buddy. But uh, what game would you would they would they play well enough that you're like you know what this might be legit? I would say whatever game six is. I would be. What if they in. stomp Clemson's ass by twenty eight? When is that game? Late September. I was got the October schedule. fifth. October fifth. There we go. October fifth. There you go. Our partners, our brothers in arms. <laughs> will you they, will you say you're I'm, sorry after Florida State <laughs> wins the game? I'll be honest, man. I might raise you a week. I think by September twenty eighth at SMU. Because I think I honestly think a few of those games are going to be challenging. I, I think, think Georgia Tech's going to be challenging. Georgia Tech's going to be challenging. Yeah, SMU is going to be challenging at SMU. If you win those three, if you win those first five games, I think you're uh, how, how challenging, Ira? Good. How challenging? Challenging. Let's challenging. Let's, 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 what if the question challenging. was? You can't just roll the ball out there and expect to win. Agreed. We were not going to pull Roy Williams, but I will ask. I you think this. SMU and Memphis both have good quarterbacks. They Georgia do. Tech's got an athletic quarterback. Yeah, he's I mean, good. Challenges. He's king's up. That's the season opener in freaking Ireland. So but those first, those three of those first five games. The I only think thing I will challenged. say is Georgia Tech had one of the three worst rush defenses in the country last year. So yeah. they're, they're, they'll make improvements. They went out and got some help, but still, including a Georgia linebacker uh, who we could have had. Anyhow, but the, the, the point back to this would be I, it's fun that you say that they're going to be challenging. I don't disagree with that. And the quarterbacks you referenced are good. I just, I want to see, Ira, it's time for you to start gambling. Because we get early lines on these games <laughs> in the summer, buddy. Yeah, I want you to put your money where your mouth is All here. Because right. I have a, a baby. Get on board, Ira. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like we need one more person on the ra- the airwaves <laughs> talking about their bets <laughs> and their bad beats. No, just, not, there's not enough of that in sports media. Nobody's going to talk about bad beats. I'm I get want on you to tell me while we're watching practice hey, how Jack, I had this win right. I put 250 down today on FSU over SMU. No, no, we never give our dollar amounts. Just say yeah. you put a sizable amount on. Two units. Yeah, yeah. You Two couple, units. You there you go. Units. You're already yeah, there. Yeah. You're there. Plus, you grew up in Miami at the track. I don't want to yeah. hear it. You know what? I'm not <laughs> against it. I just don't know if it makes great radio. Is it possible that the offense will be better? I've already said it. Tub Butter, you're too late. I've already told you it's going to be better. And I love your name is Tub Butter. 
This is fantastic. Uh, he feels like we'll be a little bit more dynamic down the field. That's right, Tub Butter. Well, we'll be able to tell you starting we'll in a few hours, we'll get to see these receivers and what they're all about. Uh, Walter writes, hello, gents. If the baseball knolls in the upcoming weekend, 19 and three, getting swept by the Tigers, who or what will be the reason? Uh, bullpen. Bullpen getting hit around would be the reason, I think. Yeah. I mean, in a, in a hostile likely, environment. Most right? likely culprit. Yeah. I would think. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, you can't expect that these starters are going to keep throwing into the seventh or whatever every week. So you might have a shorter rounding from them. But yeah, if the if the bullpen is in a high leverage situation and doesn't come through, I could see that happening. I, I would be surprised if they got swept though. Well, yeah, I would be too. They're good. The good teams don't typically get swept, but it can happen because it's baseball. Yeah, but man, they. Correct. I just uh, this last weekend, and we'll move on. I know it's not a baseball show right now, but man, to win those three games where you only scored eight runs the last two games, you only scored 16 for the series when you're averaging 12 a game, and your defense is now, you have the number four fielding percentage in the country. You have the number one batting average in the number one fielding percentage Yeah, and in the you country. don't strike out a ton. No, not a ton. You pick up the baseball. You run the bases well. Yeah. You it's throw fun. strikes. It's, it's, a fun, yeah. it's a fun team to watch now. They're going to have some lulls. They're not a bunch of Buster Posey's and J.D. Drew's Well, nobody has baseball. that, though, man. Right. That's what I'm saying. They're, they don't expect them to finish 50 and four. You, you do, however, have a guy that is uh, masquerading as a Buster Posey over hey, third base. Yeah, I mean, he's good, you know, man. You know, so he's a, I, I, this is the thing I'll say. You're right to point out just because you, you're trying to let people understand that if you're just jumping on board and maybe you don't watch baseball year round or whatever, then you got to understand that this is highly irregular what they're doing. Even great teams find a way to stumble along the way in a midweek game against yeah. somebody or whatever. But. I don't think we have to continue to throw the caveat out that there are going to be hard times as if to say that means they're not as good as we think they are. I no, think they're good. No, but I think that, no, I think they're good. I think the, the, the issue is, so you talk about like in baseball, like all sports is, level of competition isn't so important. Yeah. And so in the first, you know, 10, 12, 14 wins, you're like, well, man, they have not played anybody. Then they start playing, you know, a USF or something. It's like, okay, it feels pretty good. Then they play their first ACC series, and as Corey says, you sweep. They didn't score, but they also didn't score a lot of runs. Yeah, and there were some hard hit balls. There were some oh, loud yeah. outs, but yeah. they also didn't score a lot of runs. So now that was your first home series against the conference competition. Well, now you're taking another step up. You're yeah. taking a, a better conference team on the road, the best team in the country on hostile the road. Hostile environment. So we have to maybe see how that looks. Maybe it won't be that hostile though. So oh, it'll be hostile. I mean, but it's now that they're joining Florida, Florida State brothers and brothers. Brothers. Yeah. They'll welcome us. I, won't that they're be gonna a be a half floor, garnet jersey half orange jerseys everywhere yeah. in that stadium imagine when we get the in-stadium cameras Corey. you're gonna get the uh, yeah. as they walk onto the field and everybody joins yeah you know there might be heaving people crying saying finally Anytime. now the, well, the acc already does their spot there's uh, sportsmanship handshakes yeah. before the games <laughs> yeah, yeah they should do an fsu clemson solidarity lawsuit handshake <laughs> before right. the yeah. game yeah. just yeah exactly right uh, or stop reading that. Here you go. Here's a legitimate question on the heels of what we learned today. Uh, H.C. Knowles writes, we talk about the differences between joining the Big Ten and the SEC, but no sport would that difference be felt more than in baseball. I was going to say wrestling. What would happen to the baseball program if we joined the Big Ten? To me, it could be devastating. I hope I'm wrong about that. I mean. It's an interesting conversation. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess know. it could be like the football team was in the nineties. If link is this good and he loads up this team with big 10 money, um, they're going to be a juggernaut and they're going to get to play. They'll rule the big 10 is what Rutgers and Minnesota and Ohio yeah. state. They'll, they'll go 24 and three every year in conference. Yeah. I don't know that. I don't know. That's a huge problem. Is it a huge problem? I mean, you have the resources, you have resources and NIL money. Well, that's the big part is you have a lot of money there. So I also don't think I don't know that college baseball players would would choose I, a school based on the competition I'm necessarily. I think it's I want to go play baseball gonna be, at Florida State because the whole thing with the SEC and why I talked about the SEC and how important it is in recruiting yeah, because that's the spotlight. Like that's those are the games yeah. that get the spotlight on Saturday. So you want to impress people and go to the NFL and get your all in NIL. That's why you want to be in that conference. I don't know if college baseball has that, so I don't. The know SEC that has kind of taken over the sport in the sense that they can use it and say, "Oh, well, they play in the Big Ten, and you're not going to face week to week competition to ready yourself for Major League Baseball the way you do here in the SEC." Yeah. But I, I just don't know. think it's a deal. Breaker. You don't think don't it's think, yeah? I don't yeah. think it's a huge problem. Uh, Trey writes, "Yay, sausage!" Just imagine going to Alex Box Stadium, though. I run LSU. Well, or which whatever. is fun, which would yeah. be great. Yeah. yeah, he's not against it. No, he's just not on his knees like you are. Buddy. <laughs> hey, thank you. Hey, that's <laughs> ridiculous. You. I'm not at the T. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. Of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know what you were. In By for. the way, I was saying when I was talking about batting around teats, 
I was talking about the farm animals. Yeah, that's where that's well, where we, we didn't think you were talking about a woman's breast because you can't bat those Corey, around. I would stop uh, okay. worrying about the literalist. Uh, sorry. sorry. Uh, yay, yeah. sausage. Uh, OK, what one player that hasn't been mentioned should we look for uh, look out for this spring? An under the radar type guy. Trey B wants mm. under the radar. Corey. So I'm going to say uh, this because I talked to Adam Fuller yesterday and I know we've had conversations about him. Uh, and I think Randy Shannon talked about him, too. But Adam Fuller, unsolicited, talked about Omar Graham and his injury. And he goes, Omar Graham was our best linebacker in the fall camp. He got hurt, and he was never the same player. But I remember that guy. I remember who he was. And he was really coming on. And he's a guy that I'm really excited about now that he's healthy and has, I think it was his ankle, maybe. I okay, just don't let, I'm just not going to let you just become the Omar Graham champion when I've been talking, defending Omar I'm Graham. I'm not a champion, months, but that's, he's saying. certainly under the radar, though. So right? if sure. we're going to define our roles, yeah. I am an Omar Graham detractor. Yes, that's I do, true. Correct. I am a detractor of Omar Graham. But I, I wouldn't say I'm a And up until the What's last the 24 hours, detractor? I was the great defender of Omar You were an Graham. advocate. Yes. Is, that, is, is taking, protractor? Is that the opposite protractor. of detractor? So, so I think Corey is trying to I'm usurp. Right in the middle. He is. Yeah, I am. You're, but but yeah. I thought it was interesting that Adam Fuller yeah. brought him up unsolicited about how good he is was. Is that the guy you want to identify as the under-the-radar guy? That's yeah. not the answer. You're it, is, me. it is. It is. I don't. All, the, who's under the? Who, they're all on the radar. But it's such a weird season. It's such a weird spring where all of we want to see all of them. There's so many new guys that we want to see and how they play. I'll give me an under the radar. Thank you, Ira. That's what it calls for. <laughs> I think he's <laughs> under Omar <laughs> Graham. Ain't a, was, he's not a household was, name. This was under the radar. <laughs> um, I just think he stole it. But uh, uh how about uh, Jaden Jones is one. Okay. Junior right. college transfer yeah. last year is now a, another year removed. From his torn ACL. Under the radar discussion indeed. Adam Fuller brought him up actually and said he's a guy you don't talk about a lot. Yeah. So that's the, that's the definition of under the radar. See, Iris' answer is a lot better than yours. <laughs> Correct. I understood the assignment. Thank yeah. you very much. And I'll end on that note. Seminole Headlines 93.3 Real Talk Radio or Chant TV continues in a moment. If you've been waiting and waiting for the perfect time to buy your new house, you'll be waiting forever. This is Shannon Young with Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, and I have been a mortgage lender for over 20 years. And I can tell you that there is no such thing as perfect time. So take the first step towards your new home and let me show you what that really looks like. Chances are very high that you'll be very surprised at what I can help you do. When rates go low, prices go high, and that home that you've been eyeballing could be gone. If you're wondering how the drop in interest rates is going to affect your payment, give me a call. I'll be more than happy to show you all of the options available to get you into your new home. And for every single loan that we close for a fellow Noel, I will personally donate $250 per closing to the battle's end. Let's do this together and let's keep climbing. Call me today at 954-369-6171. That's 954-369-6171. Or you can find me online at loansfornoles.com. That's loansfornoles.com. Equal housing market at MLS number 373031. I'm Robert, and I'm a general pest technician at Paul's Termite and Pest Control. I have a fantastic job working for an amazing company. Every day, I take great satisfaction in knowing the work I do helps protect the health of the customers I'm honored to serve and their pets, too. Many are now my friends. Paul's is a local North Florida-based company, and they are constantly teaching all of us techs about the ever-changing needs of our unique part of the world. I'm Jay, and having the privilege to work with people like Robert and all of our employees is truly an honor. There is no doubt that the staff of Paul's Termite and Pest Control is the best in our industry. All of our people are local, and local really does mean something. We're North Floridians. Our kids go to school here. We shop here. We build relationships here. And we honor our commitments. To all of our customers, thanks for trusting us to protect your family, pets, and home. For the elimination of termites, any other pests, and a greener lawn, too, call Paul's. We'll get them all. From the front lines of the fight against socialism, it's America in View. Man, America is under attack. You and I have been on the front lines of the conservative revolution for the last 25 years, and it's great to be in the studio with you every week, waking the woke and strengthening conservatives with America in View. It's the highlight of my week, Brett, and I hope it's the highlight of your week, too. Tune in 4 p.m. Fridays, where we are saving the conservative movement from the woke and making America Florida. America in View on Real Talk 93.3. Keeping power reliable and affordable here in Florida is our most important commitment. At Duke Energy, we're working across our communities, strengthening our systems, rerouting power to help avoid outages, and adding proven innovations that will help make the grid stronger and more secure today and ready for tomorrow. Because Florida deserves more reliable and affordable power, and we're determined to deliver it. 
Paid for by Duke Energy shareholders. Ready for a breath of fresh air this tax season? Well, breathe easy with e Heating and Air. Don't miss out on federal tax incentives for new AC systems and heat pumps. Take advantage of up to $2,000 in tax credits, plus additional savings from city and manufacturer rebates. e Heating and Air Conditioning has been serving Tallahassee and surrounding areas since 1974. Call us today for your free estimate at 850-575-9119 or visit us online at enbheatandair.com. That's enbheatandair.com. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chauffel, and Corey Clark. It's a fun question. I switch over. All of those were, were Twitter, and now we'll go to Facebook. I figured with Tub Butter. Tub. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get names like that on Facebook. Facebook's too reputable. Yeah. Daff, the Doff the Cap to Tub Butter. That's, that's a <laughs> great name. Uh, David writes. But you know, Kerrygold doesn't come in a tub. Well, it comes in that little, not the tub, that yeah. traditional tub. It's a half tub, a quarter tub, <laughs> if mm. you will. Yeah, hey now. I think tub, uh, I'm, I'm guessing Tub Butter is not a Kerry, <laughs> Kerry Gold. Though. I don't think so either. He sounds like a margarine man. <laughs> I don't even know if it's real butter that Tub Butter's got over there. Uh, David writes, greeting boys, uh, greetings, boys. If you had to pick, who would you rather see take a huge step forward and have a very productive season? Hakeem Williams at wide receiver or Sean Murphy at linebacker? And who would make a bigger difference for the football team? I love that question. That's a good, it's question. A good question. I think Sean Murphy would make a bigger difference just because I think there's more candidates at receiver. Fair. Like, yeah. More if, options. If yeah. Akeem doesn't come through, you, you still have guys. a lot of other you guys. You got a dozen other guys that could yeah. be. Uh, solid and as players. an Omar Graham detractor, yes. you, there's a dearth of guys to choose from. <laughs> linebacker, so I'm going with Sean Murphy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That would be big <laughs> if they could get a, uh, you know, just a player of, we don't know. And this, this sounds like a slight. It's not, we don't even know if they have a player of Deloach's caliber. Right. Um, and Deloach was a good player at Florida state when he was healthy, very good, but he wasn't Marvin Jones or, you know, Dick Butkus going old school there. Um, so I w- right now we have no idea who's good at linebacker and who's going to. I think. I mean, I think DJ Lundy's solid. And solid, he's definitely right? In the non-passing downs, you know, you right. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, he's yeah neutral downs, yeah, neutral downs. He's, yeah. he's a solid linebacker. I think. I think if Omar's healthy, I think then he could be that guy based on everything that they're saying. Um, but yeah, man, it would be huge if Sean Murphy could come through. I gotta tell you, I've It'd never be cool just to have him on the on the field the way he looks. Isn't he like six yeah. three, just late, like a tall one of those uh, galloping gazelles at linebacker? <laughs> That's a saying, right? Yeah. Galloping, galloping gazelles. gazelles. What were you doing? A with lot your of foot? people say that. I was just noting that I've never met a cord in my life that has it out for me more than this particular cord. <laughs> Today has been a day where it has just unleashed war. It's gone under my foot, <laughs> under the wheels, under my leg. It will not hold true. And I'm in, in a position that if I turn to read the question, my headphones are going to get yanked off my head and you two are going to laugh hysterically. Right. It's well, so will all the people watching. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Michael writes, I'm almost convinced now with patterns over time that Florida baseball is ranked so high due to the number of MLB, MLB prospects on the team. Of course, I could be wrong, but that's about the only explanation I can have as to why they're ranked that high with these losses. Um, he goes on to say the only ranked game they played was going two and one versus Texas A and M. So you're looking at six unranked losses on their schedule. Yeah. I'm trying to understand how a 12 and seven team can be that high. They are the ranked team with the most losses, and yet in the freaking top ten. And of course, they were so patient to put us in. He, he's you know, so uh, he's I, will, I will say this: when it comes to college baseball, it's goofy. They don't. When it comes to rankings, they, they hardly ever yeah. count or take into account midweek games. Yeah, they're not as dependent on uh, your total record the way right. But especially like if basketball. you lose, you could lose every midweek game uh, in the of the season. Yeah, and well, you're still going to be ranked in the top five if you're winning your weekend series. And Florida has won all their weekend series. And yeah. they just beat Texas A&M, who's good. Yeah. So if, if you win your – they they consider winning your series as 
basically winning a game on Saturday for a college because football Because that's team. the team that you would see in the postseason. I mean, I think yes. the argument would be is but those also, are your three best pitchers. They don't they don't they don't really ding you for a one right. loss in a three game series. If you win right. the series, you won the weekend. Just As it like the football be. team won the weekend because they won their game on Saturday. I also think he's right. I, I think that a big part of it is that those Correct. doing the ranking are gonna yeah. look at so the when you start say, in the yeah. preseason, Florida has a ton of talent and a ton of draftable talent. Including a kid that may be a top three pick. That and they've also sustained baseman. an excellent level of play for a very so long period. So you don't of time. start dropping teams necessarily because they're losing midweek games and losing one game per weekend. As long as they win their weekend series, they're always going to hover right there. But I, yes, they've I, lost. Uh, they're twelve and seven is crazy, and they've been they've been have been, have some bad losses, but they've won all those series. So they don't baseball pollsters don't typically drop teams even when they're winning. When they're winning uh, as exciting as this undefeated start to the season is for Florida State and as necessary as it feels uh, that it was because of the awful campaign they had a year ago, I do I do recognize that some programs that are established and have put themselves in a really good position to have great players use the midweek games as a chance to let a freshman start or yeah. somebody who doesn't ordinarily play. So you're not even really seeing the best of those programs. And I think the rankers know that too. Right. The folks, you know, doing the voting know that as well. Zach writes, is there a better two, three, four in college baseball than Smith Tibbs and Ferrer hitting a combined four Oh five 90 hits 21 home runs. Could you argue there's a better, no better one through nine right now? Well, certainly those three are formidable. That yeah. is, that is a problem. And this roster has been lengthened in ways we never thought yeah. possible prior to the season, but they've got, they've got guys who can hit the ball hard. You look at those exit velos up and down the roster. It's and they were made, they made, uh, who was it? Uh, Williams, the center, the, I guess yeah. maybe the new center fielder. He had two outs that were over 110 miles an hour off the bat that were outs line drive to left and line drive to first. Um, I would say this, go look around college baseball now. Like there's, you know, Wake has a couple of guys that are going to be top ten picks. I mean, yeah. there are a lot of really good offenses around the country. You've got you've got one that's in the discussion. I'm talking about the two, three, four combo. Yeah, yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got a, a trio that's in the discussion as one of the best in the country. But we're a third of the way through the season. Let's see how it all plays out. There are there are some offenses that have some incredible hitters in their lineup too. Cam Smith has been a revelation though. Like he, we knew uh, he was talented yeah. and we knew he was good, but this they is, are, I mean, they are, they're all elite. I mean, and, and I almost tweeted it when I was at the game Friday night, I almost tweeted, man, you would not want to, you would not want to, as a pitcher, want to see that group coming up. Yeah, it's brutal. But then you look at the lineup, it's like, man, five and six and seven are really good too. Yeah, I mean, Cam it's not two, like, Cam you know, two hits yeah. the ball hard and it has Hinges, a good approach. I mean, those guys, they're, they're but I, I think Cam Smith is probably playing his way into a first round pick, maybe yeah. a high one. Tibbs, I think is a major league hitter. Uh, Ferrer is the guy that's kind of not thought about as much, and then they won the series this weekend because of his two two run homers. He's so, an interesting he's cat. He's one of those guys that'll drive you mad, but he's also Easter got fan, power man. for days. But man, and, and yeah. he he seems to come through with a big hit every game. Oh and yeah, especially this weekend. So he's a, he's a he's really the good lone too. guy right now that is susceptible to the really bad at bat, mm -hmm. like the really bad at bat where you go, ooh, those were three in the dirt we swung out there, but. There's so much good that comes along yeah. with them. You accept it and understand it, and that's what happens. Uh, Chad writes, top of the morning, gents. My comment calling Corey a single man before the wedding caused so much discussion that my question never got asked. <laughs> let, <laughs> no. let, let's run it back. Sorry about that, Chad. Uh, do you ever see a time where there is a draft for high school football players uh, to the collegiate level? Oh, wow. It is weird that we... Even if you're engaged, you're still considered You're single. still not going to answer his question. Uh, no, no. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Chad. Uh, no, answer it. No, I don't see a time where that's the case. Hey, we, I didn't ask. Did y'all enjoy the wedding? We had a great time. Yeah, it was fun, right? Answer the question, Corey. I, there, I don't think there'll be a draft Thank for you. high school players. I don't think that would happen. I don't yeah. know how that would work necessarily because you'd have to have a minor league. You're not going to have an 18-year-old kid playing in the NFL. So we'd have it to is. be. It is the way it is right, the, the right now, though, like because this is the first. Well, I guess they had put in the new where you could transfer every year thing at the end of the last football season. That's how Daryl, well, was it after football season though? Cause I'm just thinking, it seems to me that this basketball window got, I mean, like it's crazy. how I many people are gone have gone in the portal from this, but like they're good basketball players who went in the portal yesterday. Yeah. One guy, and I wonder if a game is in the portal. And I'm wondering if, 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 if post spring is going to be kind of crazy, like more crazy than what we expected. Well, what does that football. have to do with the draft? Well, just because I just think it's, 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 it's not like it's slowing down like the, the talent acquisition. I'm not saying it's necessarily related directly to the draft, but just the way that this, I tweeted yesterday, it's almost like at the end of every season, teams are just going to like, Hey, we're starting over. 
And like, you got to find a whole new team. Like Jim Laranega said, basically the whole team is leaving. Wait, is he asking like college football would have a draft? Yeah. Oh, he's saying college football would draft high school players. Oh no, because how do you, the SEC gets the top 30 picks. They, the well, that's going to be a rule that yes, they'll put in the, place. Yeah, the, the SEC, Sankey's like, ACC I propose. Schools will pick. <laughs> I propose, and you can either take it or leave it. Yeah, yeah. It's you get one on pick the table, every, guys. We get the first 18 picks. You get one pick every three rounds. <laughs> yeah. Um, But as far as the wedding, though, it was great. It was okay. awesome, Corey. Yeah, yeah we had a great time. time. Everybody, everybody, it was awesome. My big regret uh, about the wedding was I drank a little too much without any water, mm -hmm. and I danced too much. I was on the dance floor too long. I didn't get your to, dancing was a big topic of conversation. It, well, it's not even dancing. Day. It's it's yeah, hopping you just back and forth. Hop around you. But it's uh the the I didn't mingle with the people that I should have been mingling with. I was dancing with I was down the dance floor. Well, you what happened? With your what wife. happened? I was. I don't know. I just when you get the feeling you know, in the Ira, it's, it's, okay it's like when dance. I go to the islands and you just yeah. you you, yeah. Feel, you hear the drum beat and you just start going with it. <laughs> and so that's, I, that's just how it was. I heard I heard my '90s songs and I'm like, I guess I got to stay out here. Do you remember that I brought you a taco? I don't. I remember getting a taco. I brought you a taco because you were distracted and having to be, you know, yeah. the groom. You were telling everybody that how happy you were they were there. And I said, you need to eat. Yes. I'm looking after you. I appreciate that. And I could tell you were I was starting to feel it. it a little I was bit. just laughing at it. And yeah. so I went and got you a robust taco. And I brought it back and said, here you go. Did pal. I eat it? You took a bite and said, I got to go take this. <laughs> I got to go. Yeah, I, I got to go. I, I, the gotta music's go. calling They're playing me. Rob bass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, an easy rock. That, yeah, uh, hit I, 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 I can't, I can't what, eat what, when that's on. What are you going to do? Uh, all right. What are you looking forward to more? I think MC Rob Bass is dead, by the he way. He is. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, tough. Yeah. That's some time ago, by the way. It'd be DJ Easy Rock still with us? I think Easy Rock's hanging out. Uh, Rob Bass played it dope about a decade ago. That When they brought in Salt and Pepper. Yeah, and Salt and Pepper. Vanilla Ice was there, yeah. too. Yeah. What a night. Uh, <laughs> what are you looking forward to more? Dune 3? Or Jim Phillips explaining how excited he is about the future of the conference at the ACC football kickoff. I really cannot. I I, I get the joke. That's fun. Everybody. I, how great is the Jim Phillips addressing of the assembled media oh, at the awesome. ACC kickoff going to be? Gonna, this is going to be the talk, greatest one yet. He's going to laud what the conference has accomplished. And Rob, all the... Rob Bass is alive. DJ Easy, Easy Rock, Rock is dead mm, as a there doornail. You go. There you go. Mm, I should have known that. He, yeah, he'll laud uh, all the accomplishments and the, the sports that don't matter. Um, and, uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be what he does. It will be, there's never been a, a, a commissioner's forum. Like what will be in, I mean, in five Can you months, imagine having four months? He, the, my favorite part last year was when he, uh, was asking if his new partner, if the CW was there, uh, and he's like, uh, Mike, Mike is here. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess guy. Mike didn't make it. Uh, anyhow, we have a partner with the C -dub. C -dub. And Maybe we'll get what we asked for two years ago. Because what we talked about two years ago when he did the gated communities address mm, that was, was that he mm. should just go sit up there with a bottle of scotch <laughs> and just like let it all oh, hang yeah. out. Let At this see. point, smoke a cigar. Yeah, like, yeah, what do y'all yeah. got? Let's yeah, go. Yeah, let's go. At this point, I think we're there, right? Yeah. What do like, I care? What do I care? A conversation with the commissioner. Yeah. And I tried to protect the sanctity of uh college, college athletics and uh this is what happened yeah and we were trying to tell you with leading questions that those guys weren't coming along for the ride jim <laughs> but you you kind of stared us down like we were nuts yeah it's it's painful I haven't uh, seen dune 2 by the way though so i don't know i saw dune i don't remember a lot i you think fell there's asleep a sandworm. In dune one is what you did no i watched it but it was okay it was good but i dune 2 is apparently awesome but i haven't seen it yet if our knolls get to omaha this year can we get an hour number two from our boy Corey? uh omaha that's probably worthy. Yeah, that's from yeah, sean that's absolutely worthy yeah I would think so. By the way, your boy sprinkled a little pizza money before the season on Florida State to make the College World Series. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's All a right. plus price for you, buddy. <laughs> sure that's it. I'll have to show you guys. Hey, the if they get in the tournament, you've already won. Like, you've got, if they, they've got a shot, I, yeah. you've, you've given yourself a chance. Man, I, they, they may buy it back from you. At I, that I would probably, yeah, I would secure a profit. I might yeah. have to do that. I might uh, give in, but yeah, that's, I, I'm excited. I didn't think they'd start 18 and 0, but at the, I don't think any of us say did. the least. I'm, I'm we get an hour or two if they get out of the conference. Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah, yeah. That might be in unison. Oh, yeah, we'll all do, yeah that'd be all three. Yeah. Harmony, three-part yeah, harmony. Absolutely. Yeah, now, do we do it if they get out of the conference or when they join a new conference? Oh, yeah, they got to get in. I feel they like they need in. to be in another I mean, conference. we would know. Where they're going. I mean, but we'd look like some idiots yeah. if we did it and then they end up in the Big 12. Yeah. Ooh. Don't that do that. Don't I'm just throw saying. That out the the AA, just they're in the AAC. They oh, took UCF. Saying. That's why we can't do it, is what I'm saying. That's we're off we to wait. the Mountain West, boys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Corey would be thrilled about yeah. those flights. Oh, yeah. So I, Corey would stop doing this job. Seminole uh, <laughs> Headlines 93.3 Real Talk Radio. Orchard TV continues in a moment. 
Your local news now. Four days after law enforcement found three people dead in a home in Mayo, Florida, they have announced an arrest. The Lafayette County Sheriff's Office shared Monday the arrest of Kenton Anthony Blake. The 41-year-old is charged with attempted first-degree murder. Blake is a relative to all three people found deceased. Two women and one man were found inside a home in Mayo last week dead. The same day, they also found a man seriously injured in a separate location on Southwest Willow Street. Authorities have linked the incidents, but it is unclear if the injured man is also a relative. Authorities have not disclosed the manner of death of those killed, nor the type of injuries the fourth victim sustained. LCSO said the man they found on Willow Street was badly hurt by a weapon, but he was not shot. Police say Blake is believed to be the only perpetrator of the alleged crimes. There is no ongoing risk to the public. Investigators are still working on the case. More charges will be forthcoming. Authorities are waiting on more evidence before pursuing other charges. This is Rachel Anae with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by McNamore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at McNamoreSystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. High temperatures reach up to 64 this afternoon. Under clear skies, winds out of the north, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Lows dip down to about 40 tonight. Daytime highs approaching 73 tomorrow. Ample sunshine expected. Upper 70s Thursday turning cooler Friday with highs in the low 70s and storms possible. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Currently 57. People on social media are always looking for a reliable car repair place in Tallahassee. Well, I know a guy. It's actually two guys, and their service is super. My work schedule loves that they're open till 5 on Saturday. Everyone on the staff is professional. They treat me right, and they work on all makes and models. They even bring free snacks to the waiting area. And my fave, there's a big window, so I get to see my car's progress. Oh, I forgot to tell you who. It's on Mayhem Drive. It's the Kraft Brothers Auto Dealerships. That's right. You can count on either of our dealerships, Kraft Nissan or Infinity of Tallahassee, to treat you right. We staff certified master technicians and genuine factory parts. You'll feel welcome when you meet Debbie McClanahan at Infinity or our service director, Bob Ramhofer at Nissan. They're just good people, and they can and will answer any questions you may have. Plus, we have totally upgraded our Nissan service right up area with an indoor climate controlled and easy to navigate layout. In this month's service special, buy three tires and get the fourth one free. The craft dealerships on Mahan Drive in Tallahassee. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chofel, and Corey Clark. Let's keep it rolling here. Get back to some of the questions uh, at hand. Uh, we have, hello, gentlemen. Welcome back. Congratulations, Corey. You're wonderful people, and may you have many years of happiness together. Hey, thank you. That's from that's Bob. Very, that's very nice. Uh, have you all spoken with Mike Norvell? Yes, yesterday. Do any of you feel like he would prefer to have his own dynasty at FSU the way Bobby did, or if another situation came along, came about, he would leave? Well, he had a chance. Yeah. It seems to me Alabama yeah. was an opportunity, but um, he also said he sees the downside with college football's mega money TV deals. Playoff games are already impossible to get tickets to, and regular season games will cost too much uh, and preclude student uh, attendance. Sad times if students don't attend college football games. I mean, I think students would always. I the would home think, games. They can't, be, they can't yeah. go to the playoff games. They, First of all, they a lot of these schools require them to pay their student activities fees, which helps fund the athletics departments, which assures them of getting those tickets. Real quick, though, uh, yeah, man, if if unless something goes poorly for Florida State, like unless something changes in terms of commitment to the athletics or commitment to football or whatever it is, like Mike Norvell's not leaving of his own volition if he doesn't take the Alabama job. Like, there's no where else would you go unless things started going with the poorly, NFL, I guess. Trying, yeah, I just don't think he's seen – nothing about him seems like no, – no, not NFL that he guy. couldn't coach in the NFL, just that I think he really loves the whole college mindset. Yeah, once you survive an Alabama offer, right? There's what else, what other bigger schools like are Like Jimbo, there? it was like Texas. It's LSU yeah. and it's Auburn. It's whoever. And it's like every year it was somebody else until he finally could get the hell out. 
maybe but, Texas because he's from Texas. No, nah, I don't think that that's. But he didn't uh, go to Texas. No, nah, no, I don't think that's a draw. Maybe Central him. Arkansas has that come open. Well, the only thing I'd say is that some of these coaches have taken either lateral jobs or lesser tier jobs for the satisfaction of not having to do all the nonsense right now in college football. But I think he's young enough that he's going to survive this incredible transition. He's also made he's he's where, made himself a gazillionaire because he's good at that. Ever, he, he's that, really good at it right now. But it is football. it is a twenty hour a day situation and it goes on year round. It might be, he'll burn himself out of just the that's sport. What I, mean. I don't think he would leave, but I, I do think for he another wants, job. Yeah. Is yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I um, I, I could see where if I were an older coach, like some of these guys have, like I just want to coach football. I don't want to deal with all this nonsense. But you know what's cool about Norvell and the staff, though? I will say this because I thought this kind of bubbled up watching some of the interviews yesterday with the assistant coaches is when the what's made Mike Norvell successful in this era is he's not stomping his feet and complaining about how things have changed. Yeah. He's adapting to it and trying to figure out, okay, this is our new reality. That's how, the youth, can, buddy. how can we win it? And I thought Alex Atkins talking yesterday when Aslan was recording the Alex Atkins interview and then taking part in it. And he said they were talking about the 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 mouthpiece uh, for the earpiece for the quarterbacks and how that's changing this year and they're going to have the ability to talk to the quarterbacks a lot. Mike Norvell doesn't said last fall he didn't like it because he likes the fact that you have to coach quarterbacks to make the line checks on their own. They they don't get the information from the from the coaching staff. But then when Alex Atkins talked about it yesterday, he said, "Well, we've got to figure out how to use it to our advantage now." So like they they don't like I don't think they like this they don't want this to be yeah they wish but, it weren't so but now yeah. that it is going to be implemented their their mindset is how can we use it better than everybody else uses yeah. it and I think that's a it's a it's just cool that they have that mentality. Tom wants to know should we be concerned a little bit about the tight end room? There's some talent with Morlock, but he'll need to take a big leap forward as a blocker. That's true, mm -hmm. Tom. West looks the part, but hasn't ever stayed healthy. Thomas is talented, but I'm not content with a freshman in the two deep. Feels like maybe that's a portal need. That's a fair observation. I, uh, when people have asked me about the positions that I'm most worried about, I always start with a linebacker, obviously. And then I kind of this year have begun to shade over towards tight end. Like there's some unknowns there, and and you do need to see a step forward. Now, listen, Landon Thomas looks like a very yeah. promising player. Warlock has put Landon on size. Landon Thomas, by the way, and you guys will see pictures of him and video of him yeah. now that practice is open. If you didn't see any pictures of he him a big from the tour of duty, does not look like he should be in high school right now. I, I mean, and he, God he help the people like a, he was playing against. I mean, yeah, good grief. Uh, but yeah, no, I agree. That yeah. is an area where I think there is some depth concern. You know, I mean, obviously losing Jaheim Bell, who was hurt most of last year, but played. Uh, Morlock has gotten bigger. I could tell that right away yeah. when I saw him at the tour of duty. He needed to because he was a subpar blocker. You want to stay out on the field, you've got to be able to do both. And then they do need somebody else to step in there to be the other tight end and yeah. play at a high level. Yeah, I think Jackson West has a chance. Staying healthy is a key, but you can't really. How do you plan for that? Yeah, projecting I mean, that's tough, right? To no, but they'll they'll figure out a way to scheme. If they don't have a great right. tight end room, they'll scheme around it. They're pretty good at. I mean, two years ago they had a the best offense they've had since they've been here, and it was an injured Cam McDonald. Yeah. And who? Who was the backup tight end? Well, they, they were Preston Daniel. There was a, a and, lack. They, and they still did. They still yeah. did really well in the passing game. So you know I, they could, they'll make it work. They yeah, can I, make it work. I, and the other thing, and I just it's like I don't know if they're. I feel like they, if they're going to go after more portal players, it's not going to be a lot. And I think there might be a couple of other more pressing needs. We'll see how the spring plays out. Spring's going to be fun to watch for so yeah. many reasons. This is why we're all pumped. I'm actually excited to go over there every day of the camp because I think that you have. I, I was a little disappointed to hear. Um, and we've heard this from multiple coaches, so I'm not revealing secrets, that some guys will be held back a little bit in the spring. Mm -hmm. And some of those guys are at positions where the competition is steepest, where I think that we would really get to see it all hang out and have it, you know. But uh, there's still so much talent at various spots that there's no reason to think we won't see an intense spring for a lot of guys. And the question Glenn says in uh, the chat, he asked about Darrell Powers. And Darrell Powers is another guy in that room, but, he, you know, he, he and Brian Courtney were both were guys. Brian Courtney was 